the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021, years after zero. And today's show is massive. Um, Ian Rappaport joins us to talk about a lot of things that are happening off the field, whether it's uh, Uzis and Lambos or guns uh, being shot at players in the NFL, which, by the way, might go hand in hand whenever we decide to talk about that later. Also, just read an article that Ian Rappaport was once uh, threatened to be killed by Aaron Hernandez live in front of a crowd. Mm. So that would be cool to talk about. I didn't know that. That just popped up. We'll talk to Ian Rappaport at about 1.20-ish Eastern Daylight Time. 2.05, guess who's joining us? Who's Who? that? The Jet. Oh, what? gas up the Jet. Oh, jet no. Passing is coming to town Jeez. because baseball has started something uh, brand new. Their pitchers, the greatest one in the game right now, I guess, uh, DeGrom is mm-hmm. what everybody says. This guy, he's pitched 72 innings or something like that and has only given up four earned runs. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's unbelievable. And he's batted in more than that. So he's unbelievable. I'd be a big DeGrom talker, I assume, if it wasn't for you know the guy leading the bigs in – in home runs that is also a pitcher that's on another yep. team in Shohei. Yeah. But anyways, he was the first one to be checked last night or yesterday, and then a couple other people were checked. It was a full pat-down situation. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're not talking a lazy-ass fat guy at a soccer game video meme where he's wearing the yellow jacket. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. You're good. No, no. We're talking hat off. Go ahead and unfasten that belt a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let us go ahead and touch your neck, too. Let's see what you got back yeah. here. How's your hair? Huh? You got any <laughs> spider tack in your goddamn hair? It's a full thing. It's a laughing stock i think by both the umpire and the pitcher and everybody that is watching the video because this is the greatest pitcher in the game right now right yeah maybe ever i'm being told that and i'm watching a video from outside baseball and at, right after hearing that all these people are cheating right at, right after hearing all these people the first person i see on the internet let's let's just act like i don't stay dialed in with what's going on in baseball and every single day mm-hmm. the first thing i see this guy getting a full strip search before he even gets off the diamond i mean yeah. he is still on the diamond. they could do with the thing they could come into the dugout right and meet like follow him in there and do it in there this thing is in front of the entire stadium mm-hmm. this thing is he is on a stage could you imagine if with the grom they took off his hat and they're like well what the fuck is this wow <laughs> what do you got here huh? Look at 72 this. Innings, hmm. four earned runs. What do you got here? Oh, let me get that neck. And they're like a magician pulling a quarter out of his ear. Oh, oh <laughs> what is this? You thought you could find it? Uh, uh-uh. uh. Then go into the belt. They're going underneath oh, the yeah. belt. Take your belt off. Take your belt off. They're going. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What if they just did that to Degrom? The entire game would have been. I mean, he would have been run off the tracks because this is their best guy. And in a rule that has been around for a long time. And by the way, he did not. And they say he does not. And he doesn't have to. Everybody else is actually trying to catch up to him by using all this shit. But this shit has been used since the beginning of time. Now they're doing this whole stop and frisk-like situation to baseball pitchers. I mean, it is a hilarious scene over there. And once again, the things that happen outside of baseball, much better than the sport themselves. Mm -hmm. At Ty Schmidt, massive baseball fan. How do you feel about this and what are you going to ask Jet about it? Well, we were talking uh, earlier before the show started. I want to know, like, it, is this every single game? Like, we, we were saying, you said, hey, now that he they checked him, he was good. I mean, you saw, like, his stuff is incredible. It just is. He's very, very fucking good. Like, so is he good to go now? Does he have to do this again or is this going to be every single start? Is it a random check? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, can, shit, you want, you want to talk about, you know, I mean, the games are – too too long, too slow as it is, like shit like this. If they're doing it multiple times a game, a couple you know different innings, like this isn't winning over anybody. So what did we say uh, we landed upon? And we like to think of this as a nice brainstorming uh, show. You mm-hmm. know, you kind of hear the brain unload into you know the mic. What did we we say this was? It was an unwritten rule that was abused 
okay, which is when unwritten rules get exposed. Then that leads to restriction, which is normally an overreaction. Right. And then it kind of writes itself, mm -hmm. right? For instance, it happened with the footballs, kicking footballs in the NFL. It was an unwritten rule. Balls get beat up. Then all of a sudden, one of those balls, abuse of those balls, it became too fat. It accidentally got in the hands of Brett Favre. Favre throws an interception. They change the entire rule. Brand new ball every single time you kick it. That then changes that whole thing. This is an overreaction to right the ship of what decades of wrongs is what they're saying right for the unwritten rule that everybody seemed to be on board with until they took it to a step too far they got too good they abused it even the good pitchers started doing it because they saw everybody else doing it because they saw 500 600 million dollar deals yeah. being signed by people so you could see how maybe they would do it. happen with steroids people abused it mark mcguire couldn't even move his goddamn arms. No. They had the best ratings of all time, but mm -hmm. then that is automatically going to be abused. Everybody started doing it. It became a big story. Then they had to overreact, correct it. This is how long does this last? We think it makes. There's no way this makes it to the end of the season, right? This is like just a couple Damn. weeks, I assume, and then they're going to be like, okay, we all agree to go back down to just the sunscreen and rosin or something mm -hmm. like that. Let's get rid of the spider tack, the shit that you actually can lift trucks with. Do you think that's what's going to happen, or is this going to be for? another year do you think this is going to be a full-time thing i really don't know because i mean especially the way they're doing it like you said they're not going in the dugout or anything so like if they catch someone they want it i think to be like a public you know like this guy's cheating but i think the the biggest issue too that a lot of these like star pitchers are saying is like the guys who are making these rules they never played baseball like they don't they, they don't throw as hard as we do like they have no idea what this stuff does i mean it's been passed down from generation to generation it's it is a part of the game so i i don't know like the the way they the mlb has dealt with it it makes it seem like they are trying to like this is going to be a thing but i don't know if it'll last because these guys are fucking pissed all right so we'll talk to jet about that in hour three and i did not expect to get into that deep of conversation there but my brain was just going because i saw degrom's face and then i immediately thought and just like we said about the brainstorming thing what if he fails there and that is the shot that was live by the oh, way yeah. that was that was seen by everybody as soon as it happened because it is the guy mm -hmm. by the way. He's that is the he laughs in the ump's face where <laughs> hey gotta do that yeah. gotta do it you know what if he just what if that hat he wears was sitting in the whole top of that thing there's like a a, a, a false bottom like he's goddamn Johnny Depp there's <laughs> yeah. a false bottom on that hat and underneath there there's a full thing that oh 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 what we got here? What's what this? if they zippered <laughs> something in the hat <laughs> yeah. I mean that could have happened it didn't did not expect to talk about that to be honest we will talk to Jet Passing about that in hour three. Cannot wait for that. The big news, though, in not just the sports world, but I think the entire world that came out of yesterday was Carl Nassib, uh, formerly of Hard Knocks fame. Okay, and we'll talk about that. We, listen, this Carl Nassib guy, we ain't never taken his fucking financial advice. No, Can't definitely not. Okay? We seen it on HBO. He's living in a, in a world that would be very cool financially with what he was talking yeah. about. But I did like the fact that this guy seemed to be incredible in the room. He was well-liked by people. He was, uh, he was willing to get up there and speak. Did not know him, never played with him. But I had a lot of respect for somebody that can stand in front of a uh, football locker room, a uh, defensive line room, whatever it is and do his whole thing and just have that confidence. So I was always impressed with him as a him, not his financial knowledge, sure. mm. but on Hard Knock, seeing somebody speak, anytime you see somebody speak and it's well received in a team, that guy has a lot of respect amongst his peers. Like it is not easy to speak in, in a football locker room or anything like that. So although he was very wrong when I saw that, that's all my first judgment was. Now, after yesterday, I get a chance to really see a guy who is gonna be an inspiration I think for legitimately millions of people. And I think it's very difficult for some people uh, to really wrap their minds around why it's such a big deal, right? Because I think some people either have a lot of hate in their heart and they don't want to hear it. They get the fuck out of here. I got my, I don't want to do that. Like, listen, I don't care. Do your thing. Uh, I don't, I don't give a fuck. But then there's some people I think who live in a world in their head where they think that everything is already at the point where it should be, where everything is already cool, where uh, the immediate reaction was, why should, why should I care about what he does behind closed doors? Like, yeah, do it, man. I'm happy for you. It's like, Cool that you feel that way, mm -hmm. okay? But I don't think they, the people, Carl, and the community that is not very well represented in sports, I don't think yet, hopefully it will be at some point, I don't think they feel as if we're at a point where it's just like, oh yeah, this is clear, everybody's like that. Now, I do like the fact that 
I'm not certain. I am around a lot of people on a regular basis who don't have friends that are gay and are very, you know, I don't want to say knowledgeable about the gay community. I think we're all learning as we go, and I think it is slowly coming, but I think this is a massive ordeal, especially in sports. I've had four to five teammates uh, that I play with who came out after they ended up playing. I don't think there's a lot of guys who would ever be comfortable in a locker room saying who they were if this was the case. Although, and I said this when Michael Sam got drafted, I was asked by the Colts to speak on this, by the way. Mm -hmm. Never asked to talk to the press any other time uh, that happened it was obviously a big to do because there was maybe one or two guys out of the over thousand guys in the nfl who came out and said something and i think they they said it from a place of ignorance obviously probably had never experienced or had a friend that was representing the gay community who had been in their lives who had told them about potential things that have happened to them said to them and everything like that but those two to three things that got said in a negative light about michael sam potentially coming into the locker room or a gay player that isn't michael sam coming into the locker room hogged the publicity hogged the headlines negativity always does that and i got a chance to be in a locker room whenever that whole thing was happening and i felt like and this might be just my pure optimism and mostly positive like I'm, 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 I did not sense that there was ever going to be at that time with Michael Sam in the locker room that I was in I can't talk for every other locker room although I have learned that a lot of the cultures are about the same in every locker room might some might be winning buildings but normally the locker room pretty similar I as long as you came to work as long as you uh, produced on the field, as long as you bought in in meetings, and as long as you helped us ultimately for achieve whatever our goal was, whether some people's goals were to win, some people's goals were to get rich. If you came in and helped that whole thing, the sense that I got from damn near everybody, coaches included, was like, hey, do what you got to do. Can't wait yeah. to have you or whatever. Michael Sam, obviously, SEC Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah. For whatever reason, maybe his toolbox just didn't equate into the NFL where it's the adult league. And by the way, that is even more so something about the NFL. you got a lot of players of the year, not just Michael Sam in college who are all-stars. They get the NFL, can't make it because the NFL is a different animal for whatever reason. And hopefully it wasn't because he was gay is why he didn't make it. What I'm trying to say is when I was in there, it didn't feel like that was going to be the case. It truly felt like everybody was like, as long as he's a great player, as long as he works hard and likes everybody and buys in, we'd love for him to be a teammate. That's what I said then. That's what I'll say now, I assume. That's what everybody in the Raiders locker room is saying. Those that were in the Browns locker room with Carl, they probably say, hey, this motherfucker done no finances. Yeah. Okay, but he's right. a good guy. He's a confident guy, and we're happy for him. And that was kind of showcased, I think, around the internet and around the league last night. So big congrats to Carl. Yeah, baby, Carl. Woo! He said he'd been sitting on that for a while. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. He said he also donated the Trevor Project, which, by the way, I think we're all kind of learning about as we go here. I feel like I should have known about that a lot more. I knew that there was higher suicide rates because of self-doubt, confidence, identity, everything like that, bullying. Uh, but the stat that he gave about how, you know, if somebody is a role model, basically, or talks to somebody that is older, it'll save like 40% chance. It's like 84, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's, it was like super high. It's crazy. It is a 40% better chance that they won't do it. I just think uh, we're at the time now where we're learning a lot more about everything. Okay, I can open my phone. I can Google something that happened in a, a, at a place I was and just learn about it immediately. There, there's no more like, yeah, you have to hear stories about somebody. I feel like the LGBTQ community is one that we can continue to learn about, continue to grow, and ultimately, hopefully, just live as a society completely together, which is what a lot of people say. Uh, who cares what they do behind closed door? Let's hope that it, we get to a point where everybody views it that way because that's legit. I know a lot of straight people that do fucking weird shit behind closed doors. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I find myself in those conversations with them. I'm like, what? why are you telling me that? Like, is there a lot of people that do what you're doing right now? Uh, so you, you like peeing on people. Okay. Huh. Hey, huh. Good luck in there, dude. Interesting. All right. Good luck in there. So I understand that there are some hypocrites out there, too, who potentially say uh, that they are against the, the gay crowd and they do shit in their lives that are uh, considered unholy or whatever the hell it is uh, considered. But I'm fucking pumped for Carl. Uh, I hope he's 
I hope he's at, he obviously is at a point where he has a lot of peace and hopefully he'll continue to play great football and hopefully he'll lead the way for a lot more other people who are potentially not as comfortable as he is at this moment uh, to kind of be comfortable with themselves and move along. Well, and to your point too about like why it is important for all those people saying like, well, why are we hearing about this? Who cares? Like you, you throw that stat out there. It's like, okay, this actually is making like a legit meaningful impact. And you can tell like in the video and everything like, it's not like a publicity stunt. It's not like he's trying to it get his name like out he there. No, no, no. no, it, it was, was like it was like, like a weight obligated. off his shoulder. Like, hey, yeah. I'm you know comfortable and like this is a legit issue. And if I can put a face on it, why not do it? So I had uh, we had in college a couple teammates. Whenever I was young, they were older, and then when I was older, a couple guys that were younger. You know, and there was I feel like there was a couple guys that we potentially you know, or like thought, you know, like there's a chance or whatever. By the way, friends with the guy, but we never wanted to be the person to like, like I, I feel like I'm a good communicator. I feel like I am. I feel like I'm yeah. a pretty good communicator. That, that is something I think I, I can showcase on a daily basis and I have been and mm -hmm. to be honest, too much so. Uh, I never knew how that conversation was supposed to go when I'm hanging out with somebody and you just kind of, because that is such a personal thing. And uh, I think for those teammates of mine that I saw eventually, and I think I, I seen it on uh, Facebook, a video came out or mm -hmm. whatever. I was like so incredibly happy for them. Like, man, that this has to be such a better life now yeah. as, as opposed to just fake whatever you had to do in almost every situation that you thought you couldn't be yourself. Couldn't even imagine pump for you now getting to uh, you know be yourself without everybody ever thinking, saying, or doing anything. You're just like, yep, there, let's, let's go. This is how we roll. Let's keep it moving. I'm pumped for Carl, man. I'm fucking pumped. Yeah, you just hope he gets treated the same, you know? Because when you look at the Bucks, you know, hard knocks, he was a guy in that locker room who was like shooting the shit, joking with everybody. You yeah. just hope none of that kind of changes just because the perception might have changed. No, by the way, I think that's awesome that he is that guy. He had a C on his chest, too. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's why I think it is so... That's what for, and like I said, there was a couple people that said something whenever the Michael Sam thing was happening around the NFL, guys that I don't know, but like they were obviously making headlines and every media was coming into every locker room, by the way, to ask just to, just to see that whole thing. Now that guys who maybe, right, had never experienced an openly gay person yeah. in their personal circle, in their life. Maybe they never had a friend. They never uh, smoked, drank hung out with anything with somebody from that community. Anybody that was teammates with Carl in the past, he was like, hey, Carl, okay, so now they, they like Carl. They put a face with a cause, and anytime you do that, that is a personal connection, normally that's when real change can happen. And even more so, it's like, happy for Carl, pump for him, because I think he's gonna do a lot of help, I think. Well, and like you just said, like when the, with, with this stuff, I feel like the media kind of jumps on it, and it can become a distraction, right? And that's why guys might kind of feel a little not wanting to kind of bring it up or have that conversation that's uncomfortable where and, you can, and anytime you get labeled yeah a distraction it's mm -hmm. a I, I feel like there's a lot of reasons why you would be scared to say you're mm -hmm. gay in the nfl but with that being said as a teammate and for coaches that i have now maybe front office or maybe there are some coaches that i have not met or whatever but everybody that i encountered and this is just me and this once again this might be just because of how i am i talked to literally everybody and everything as long as you could play football and work like it's almost like i don't want to say like something that would be welcomed because i think it would be like cool because there's a lot of time where it's just groundhogs day by mm, yeah. so these are like cool conversations to potentially open up and uh, you know maybe you know learn about something you couldn't learn about but if i you could see how i guess in your eyes you could see how somebody who was potentially still you know in the closet or whatever i'm not doing I, i'm i'm barely making the team right now yeah uh, uh there's only 53 roster spots 40 whatever dress i am 43 44 i you could see how anybody would potentially think that even more so why it's great that Carl did that. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Cool. That's a big deal. Congrats to Carl. Boy, Carl. Carl. Had a boy, Carl. That's a big deal. Yeah. I just came out of nowhere, too. He just recorded a selfie video. All right. See you guys later. Yeah. yeah. Like, God damn. All right, Carl. Here we go. I wonder what he, I wonder, I, I assume he, 
the Trevor Project or something. Maybe he, he learned about something that was potentially happening, or maybe he had some people in his life that knew, uh, that had an experience, and were like, hey, if you, you could really, hey, you could really save some lives. Like, I wonder how that whole thing happened to get him to the point to do it, because that's a big decision. With Pride Month, too. I feel like the Pride Month has been, like, at the forefront of a lot of stuff, like, this entire month. Right? So there was a commercial on uh, Monday Night Raw last night, and it was Sonya. Yeah. Okay. And Sonia told her story basically about how whenever she did, uh, I think she did Tough Enough or something like that. Mm -hmm. And as she was there, she was asked uh, about her family or whatever, because a big part of being a wrestler is you're on the road a lot. You're traveling the whole thing. And she was asked if she had uh, was in a relationship or single or whatever. And she said that that was the first time she ever like she came out on national television really? talked about it yeah on that show and it was like uh it was a pretty cool thing you know it's i wonder there's no blueprint i assume for that right no, no. i doubt it you hear all these there's probably a bunch of different stories because you hear the stories of like oh my parents told me to leave and never come back like there is that that happens i guess that does happen for members of the gay community i've heard that story before then there's some people they say that cut them out of their lives and in family members or whatever and then there's obviously situations where everybody's like fucking awesome let's go it's, that is so cool or whatever congratulations it's just what a that's a that's a part of our society that is still kind of misunderstood or underrepresented and everything like that as are a lot by the way but it's kind of cool to learn about especially Pride Week. Well, and I feel like it's probably Month, a lot it's sorry. it's probably pretty difficult too when you are like a public figure like that. You know, you a lot of times you hear like when people are coming out it's like a, a group of like 12 people that end up finding out, you know, it's like his was just like you know, it's just out there. It's like yeah. a, he's a very public person, so it's like you know, I, obviously, I'm sure the struggle with that is is pretty difficult too. So the fast, this is going to be a much different comparison, but same thing. Uh, I wonder if he maybe didn't want, like, hey, I'm not supposed to be like, uh, like the spokesperson for that. Right. Like, and like maybe he had lines. that. I'm not supposed to be. There's other people that should be doing that. And this is a very terrible comparison, but it does kind of equate, I guess, if you stick with me here. I never wanted to be the spokesperson for having in the worst night of your life on television get death threats and bounce back on the other side into kicking and punting position, right? Mm -hmm. But then whenever a guy has a terrible game in college and misses a couple kicks, I'll get 50 tweets, and I would normally reach out to old buddy yeah. and be like, hey, there is life on the other side. You're like, hey, right now, it feels like the world hates you, everybody hates you. You're going to be all right on the other side of this thing because of what happened in the 13-9 pit game. I, I'm happy Carl got to the point where he didn't. maybe he didn't want to be like, hey, I'm not supposed to be this, but I am not. This is a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. And now he's at the point where he wants to do it. Whatever the case, happy he chose Yeah, game. good for him. Um, pivoting around the NFL. Hey, mm. Tom Brady Whoa. is a motherfucking savage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Tom Brady, whenever people say, oh, this player has a little Tom Brady in him, I immediately said, what, what does that mean? Is that right? Will you please, will you please tell me what that means? Oh, he's got a little Tom Brady in him. Okay. All right. So does that mean he has a bad body at the combine? Takes a picture, it's a bad body? Mm -hmm. is, that what it, is that what it means? Maybe. Does it mean he can throw the ball well? Does it mean he's not going to run much? Does it mean he's going to avoid sacks on a regular basis? Does it mean he's going to win six Super Bowls? Is that what? What do you mean by that? Oh, he's just got a little Tom Brady in him. It's like, all right, fucking wild statement. Because I think the thing <laughs> that is Tom Brady inside Tom Brady, I think the Tom Brady inside Tom Brady, the Tom Brady in Tom Brady, if you will, is that he's the most competitive human on earth. Mm -hmm. Bar none. Michael Jordan, you just saw the entire last dance thing. He's sitting at dinner before the Utah Jazz thing. Coach walks by. Michael Jordan makes up a statement that that coach says to him, and he says, that's all I needed. I'm going to fucking go kill. It's like, <laughs> okay, all right. That That's inside. If that's what Mac Jones has inside Ooh. of him, because that's what Tom Brady has inside of him. That's what Kobe obviously had. There's only a couple people mm -hmm. that really reach the level of competitive juices where everything can be sacrificed for it. Nothing will be left behind to not achieve it. Like That is why Tom Brady is Tom Brady, I think. So whenever you hear people say, oh, he's got Tom Brady him, it's like, I mean, we're going to find out, I guess, in like 25 years from now yeah. if he is still the most competitive human. Because not only is he burying putts, mm. okay, like 25, 30-foot putts that a are hard-breaking right to left. Now, there were three makes <laughs> in that. Two out of three. 
No, uh, no, no, I thought yeah. it was three out of three. Watch uh, the footage. It is uh, Doctor. Run the footage. Run the footage. Wow. Okay. Here's Tom Brady looking incredibly handsome, by the way, mm -hmm. wearing his Christopher Clues collection mm -hmm. glasses. And then all of a sudden he says, hey, DeChambeau, this one's for you. First putt, right to left break. Can't Count it. In the yeah. hole. Okay, it's like a 30-foot putt. I'm, I mean, I'm no golf expert. That motherfucker rolled a long time, mm -hmm. and it moved a long way. His second putt. Hey, this one's for you, Aaron. Now, that chairs. potentially looks... <laughs> It potentially looks like the football to the moon, but we're still yes. not sure whether or not he hit that fucking moon. Uh, Good point. Okay, we're not 100% sure. This third one, though. Yeah, center cut. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you remember that first little golf experience Tom Brady had the shot of the day, but played overall horrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he was worrying on a new team, had a new offense, everything like that. He said, that ain't happened again. That ain't happening again, by the way. He's probably out at this country club at, what, the other four hours he's awake uh, that he isn't studying film on how they're going to yeah. go perfect this season. He's going to play great golf. Now, the second one, maybe, maybe didn't go in. Maybe. Okay, in real life. He still put in two, oh, at yeah. least one 30-foot putt like that. He's going to play well. Okay, so that is not what I'm talking about here, though. What I'm talking about right now is the fact that he is able, after six Super Bowls, after getting kicked out of New England, well... Okay, I don't know about that. Basically, yeah, kicked out yeah, of yeah. New England. Okay, back your shit and he go. He felt as if he was being forced out. The culture made him, after winning a lot, want to go experience it somewhere else and see how you know Peyton got to do it at mm -hmm. the end and everybody else uh, potentially that is a high end quarterback Montana. other than Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. go up to the top yeah. and have a little bit more say in some things and and kind of do it. But not only did he have that okay like chip, but if I would have heard what he said in the barbershop thing with LeBron before the season, and I predicted Buccaneers Chiefs, okay? Yep. But I would have I would have maybe put a substantial amount on the Buccaneers' future Super Bowl to win. I had no idea that there was a team that was interested in Tom Brady until the very end and then said, nah, and made Tom Brady. Now, who knows how it actually went down? Jordan, Utah coach. Who knows how this mm -hmm. actually went down? Tom Brady got so much, like, emotional rush out of this team dropping out that he turned it into another chip on top of getting kicked out of New England on top of he's got to be better than Bill Belichick on top of whose legacy is it for the greatness is it Tom or is it Bill's on top of all of that now there's some other NFL team that we do not know people are saying it's maybe the Rams which I don't know. Maybe. People are saying maybe it's the uh, Bears. Ooh. I guess the Bears are being mentioned in this entire thing. And is that Nick Foles mm -hmm. then yet again? Because oh. Nick Foles in, in the Eagles, by the way, catches touchdown in-game against Patriots where Tom dropped it. Tom uh, allegedly won't go shake Nick Foles' hand. COVID protocols, by the way. Right. So we're not 100% sure, although he did shake other hands. Maybe he was told he could shake other hands. Him and Nick Foles don't. Is that because Nick Foles goes up there and the Bears were in conversation and they say, uh, no, we're going to stick with uh, Foles and Mitchell Trubisky. Is that who he's saying, you're going to stick with that motherfucker? Which is what he said on the barbershop, which is coming up. I cannot wait yeah. to watch it, by the way. That episode's going to be unbelievable. I watched. I, I really enjoy that series, by the way. But that's going to be, was it the Colts? Mm. And did he hear that we were talking to Phillip Rivers? And then that's why at the end, whenever the Colts dropped out, he's, you're going to stick with that mother? Who was it? Because I would like to know, and the internet is guessing, and everybody has an answer. I have no idea who it is. Is it the Niners? Yeah. That's maybe. what you think? Well, I mean, that was his number one choice, right? And uh, keep in mind, this is after, you know, Jimmy G overthrew in the Super Bowl. So Brady, in his mind, probably like, hey, you're going to stick with the guy who kind of lost you the game, essentially. Or you're going to, you know, go with me, who's been to nine and has won six, now so, seven. Hey, by the way, if it is the Niners, which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it makes more sense than Colts. Because he would have to know that we're trying to get the Phillip Rivers, and then he would have to react to Phillip Rivers. Mm -hmm. And for the Bears, I mean, they, they had a quarterback competition, so who knows who it would be unless, yeah, who knows who it would be. I don't think it's the Bears, because that was two quarterbacks then instead of, so he would say those motherfuckers right. as opposed to that motherfucker. And if you go back to the Rams, I guess maybe could be the Rams. Yeah. I don't know how the Rams got into this conversation because I thought the Chargers. That's yes. the one I read was that it was the Chargers too, and it wouldn't be that them because that was right before they drafted Herbert. So I So I it has to be the Niners is what seems like the obvious thing, which by the way, our first guess I think yesterday was oh that is that Jimmy G. Mm -hmm. And then the internet went a 
hundred different ways yesterday, and I heard compelling arguments for all of them. Niners still make the most sense, though. Yeah. Jimmy G, though, hearing Tom say that motherfucker when I think they have the same agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you know, uh, like a lot of people say Jimmy G was good because he was under Tom Brady's tutelage for mm -hmm. a while. Does Tom hate Jimmy G? And is that really the reason? why everything blew up up there because Tom wanted him gone. Yeah. Bill wanted him kept. I mean, these are all the things that you can kind of go on on June 22nd when there's nothing else to talk about. Mm -hmm. And you see a six second clip from Tom Brady looking <laughs> incredibly handsome saying, you're going to go with that motherfucker? Because by the way, what is that conversation? Is that about golf? Yeah. Or do be. we know? Could be. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we have no idea, but Niners seems to make the most sense. Yeah, I mean, with the Chargers, it could be Tyrod Taylor, right? Like, that that could be what he was referring to. But even then, it's like they were drafting a quarterback no matter what. He, Tom Brady with the Colts last year. There that. was a report that came out, too, that said he didn't want to go to – yeah, he didn't want to go to the West Coast unless it was the Niners. So that would kind of lend more credence to it being Jimmy G. That Dan Patrick, though. Okay, Dan Patrick said, did you know, and by the way, Dan Patrick been around a long time. Mm -hmm. He'd been in the game a long time, shook a lot of hands, knows a lot of people. Absolutely. Dan Patrick said, did you know that the Bears were in the final list of teams for Tom Brady? Question mark, Patrick asked, to, I assume Dan Etz. Yeah, I think so. Great group of people, by the way. We appreciate their hospitality over there to me and us all the time. They're very nice. The final list that Brady was looking at, the Chargers, the Bears, and the Buccaneers. I was told this yesterday. I said, wait a minute, the Bears, the source told me. Yes. He adds that the Chargers were the long shot because Brady didn't want to be on the West Coast unless it was the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, that means the Bears were the runners up. So the Bears then, via the Dan Patrick source, were the ones that dropped off at the end. And then what Tom Brady said, you're going to go with that motherfucker to Mitchell Trubisky or Nick Foles, who they just picked up an $80 million contract. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. And hopefully we get the answer in, in the episode of the shop or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that that is quite a thing to ponder when you got nothing to talk about. Do you think it could still potentially be that they he had mutual interest with the 49ers and they kind of like kicked the tires on it a little bit and then they were like, ah, actually, we're going to stick with Jimmy G. So then the Bears got involved. Right. And then the Bears were like, ah, nah. we're going to stick with Trubisky and Foles. And then Bruce Arians is like, are you really going to come here? <laughs> we will give you whatever, dude. Hey, whatever you want. And Jason Light's like, fucking, hey, Mike Greenberg, we got the salary cap guy. Listen, he's a fucking whiz. This dude will be able to just cut up every con. We'll be able to keep everybody here forever, too. Don't Gronk? you? Hey, come you want Gronk? Come on. on. AB? Come on. Sure. Mike Evans, come on. Fournette? Chris Godwin, come on. Ronald Jones, come on. Let's do it. Everybody. Come on. <laughs> on defense side of ball, everybody. <laughs> oh, everybody stay. Yeah, we can. Tom. We got Chico with this nerd we got here. <laughs> hey, this this nerd, our particular nerd, unbelievable. Big yeah. brain. He read the entire NFL uh, uh, guideline policy, mm -hmm. and he even got the asterisks like on 100 B A whatever the uh, word of Roger Goodell <laughs> thesis verse four whatever mm -hmm. in there. And we we cracked the code. We're gonna be able to do it. And. Uh, Chicago, it's cold as shit. Come, on, Come down to Tampa. Wait till you see this. We got this place. It is unbelievable. J J it's called Jeter'sburg. Yeah. Jeter. Sixty thousand square feet on the water, overlooking the bay. Come on, we'll build you a town. We'll build a town down here. Yeah. I mean, I guess it wasn't that much of a sell, huh? In, in the Tom Brady they got was fucking just furious at everybody. New England. Chicago, I assume he's pissed. San Francisco. San Francisco is pissed off at the Chargers. Like, eh, I don't want to go back to well, why are you on the West Coast? You know, he's he's he probably upset at them for even move, or having a team there. Yeah. They would have stayed in San Diego, maybe I'll, whatever. I'll be there. He was pissed at everybody. Mm -hmm. That was a lock. Should have known. Yeah, that, that was a lock last year. Go ahead. What was the, what? Like that's the difference, right? In these guys, like what you said to lead off this whole thing, the competitiveness that he has just Mac Jones it, might have that comes and goes. He might. Yeah, but I mean, that's an absurd statement. Mac, Mac Jones might have it in him to win six Super Bowls, be considered the greatest of all time, hit free agency one time, and feel disrespected by a team that he has never met or played for mm -hmm. before, all the way across the country, and that motivates him so much to go win a fucking Super Bowl because of him. If Mac Jones has that in him, Fucking Matt Patricia made the right decision when he gave the final okay yeah. for Bill Belichick to draft him. Yeah, and if he doesn't, fucking Jimmy G is probably a Patriot next year. So <laughs> whatever. I don't know.
What a wild time. You want Jimmy G? Well, I mean. Because if it's San Francisco, he's saying, that motherfucker? Yeah. I mean, until until Mac Jones is either proven terrible or proven amazing. What about Cam, dude? Cam, Cam. got COVID. Cam's on a one-year deal, though. No matter what, hey, you always got to be thinking long-term. If, if Oh, yeah, chestnut checkers. Exactly. Cam Newton's on a one-year deal. No matter what, he's not a long-term option. It's only Mac Jones. If it's not Mac Jones, bring back James. Watch Cam Newton go win MVP yeah. this year. Sure. Hey. Super Bowl title. And that, somehow Bill, Bill Belichick will talk him into pl uh, playing after an MVP in a Super Bowl. Another million dollars. How about two million bucks? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Taxes. Think about taxes, how low that is. Much lower than what it could be. Think about Tom, Aaron, all these guys making all that money. Think about the taxes. Yeah, You'll be paying such less tax than them. And Cam will go, well, in Florida, there is no state tax. That takes away like 15, 16%. Don't, don't talk, talk about nah, that. Nah, you don't know. <laughs> All right, we're back in four minutes and phone calls. There's some more stuff to talk about. Lamar Jackson, Ooh. Uh, his contract potentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, can't wait to chat about that. Hockey's happening. Oh, yeah. Hockey's Here we happening. Go. Hey, the Bolts go Bolts. Go Bolts. Down there in Tampa Bay, Q, Gronk, and Irland. The Bolts seem to be a wagon right now. Yeah. And then uh, there was an Uzi and a shooting. All right, this is Pat Magnus Show. We're back in four minutes. Roman, a men's health brand that can dance very well and make you the best you possible. Are you suffering from male pattern baldness? John, we got something for that. Herpes. See ya. Premature ejaculation, gone. No more coming too quick. Allergies as well. And that's not all. We have clinically tested supplements for everything, including Erectile dysfunction. Come on! Bye bye! GetRoman.com forward slash Pat. Be the best you possible. Today's challenge will be a frozen pizza basketball shooting relay. Zito and I will have to eat half a frozen pizza. Once we finish a half a frozen pizza, our teammate that'll be next, in my case, Nick, will have to make a layup, then a free throw using the same ball. Once he makes those, he will then pass the ball to Foxy, who will have to make an NBA three, and then a half court shot. Boys, are we ready? Get to our spots. Zito and I are starting. Oh, oh there's a social distance, social distance. Hey, no, the social pizza. Cheers, pizza. Pat is off to an early lead. Pat is dominating Zito. Zito eating much slower. Zito's eating much slower than I thought he would. I, I used scissors to cut the cell to get to the fourth. Pat used scissors to cut the pizza because we do not own uh, utensils in this offense. Uh -huh. I mean, this I'm clapping up. <laughs> Zito is cramping up. Uh, Nick, go. Uh, ah! Ah! Free throw, free throw now for Nick. Zeke is still Don't finishing his pizza. Yay! Foxy, Let's you're go, off. Foxy, Foxy from you three. You can rebound for him, Nick. Let's go! Really go! Foxy, Big Motor's going to pitch that up. Oh, yeah! Dave McAfee is off to quite a lead. Oh, my God! Oh, Nick! Oh, he's Bailey down! Oh. Wall, Bailey hits the... That's his own! Bailey at the free throw line. Oh, is he God. choosing the granny like oh, he did? Oh, Bailey! Going go in. let her go! That was going in! Foxy is at the home run. Potter misses. Foxy barely misses. Oh, this is electric. Hey! Pat is now on to the second half of his pizza, and Connor cannot buy a bucket. You hate to see what's happening here. Stooge. Oh, an air ball at this point. Has Connor oh. ever shot a basketball before? Connor hits a three. He's now back go, to Connor. the half court shot. Here we go. <laughs> People will remember that in this same position, uh, Connor went 0 for 12. 0 for 12 in basketball. He's stacking badly injured. Oh, there's a stack guide. That was his original plan. Are you regretting the stack decision? Burn a lot. <laughs> the Joey Chestnut of pizza basketball racing, Pat oh, McAfee, has finished. Nick, lay up, go. <laughs> He's taking psyched <laughs> off for Billy McGonagall. Go Doesn't Jason, care man. for the free throws. Nick, Take first free throw up, air ball. Take your time, Nick. not even close. Don't worry, pizza has, or Z has like six pieces left. Take your time, Nick. Take your I mean, time. This is, this is the building of the factor. 
Boxing we did it is up. up. Boxing from three and half. Bingo. Bingo. If he hits All his first three, is a half we'll give away 5,000. Oh! 5,000 to the commenters who picked Team Pat. Fucking loser. <laughs> I finished. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back to that show. A little early today, the Hammer Down boys have joined us. Hey, all right. We've got AJ Hawk joining us in about 19 minutes. Then 40 minutes from now, we got Ian Rappaport, a man who has had his life threatened by an actual murderer in public before. Did not know that was the case. Aaron Hernandez looked at Ian Rappaport right in his face and said, I'll kill you. (laughs) Right now. (laughs) I did not know this happened. It's crazy. Zito was just scrolling the internet. Who knows? Okay. I search uh, once a week Aaron Hernandez news. Do you really? Yeah, I look up highlights all the time. Chris, I never play the game. Kind of so dime. Ditka, I mean, what, yeah, oh, wow, oh. Ditka. Yeah, honestly, what did you say? Um, greatest, what did you yeah. say? Greatest tight end to ever play? To ever play on the field? Aaron Hernandez? Yeah. So that's not how a lot Ditka. of people remember him. That's crazy <laughs> that you just. That is how you. That is especially with Ditka being from Chicago. Yeah, better coach. Chicago. Okay, better, all right. better coach. All right, you hate him, but that team yeah. up there. Eighty-five, baby. Imagine Tom Brady. If he was able to have Aaron Hernandez and Rob Gronkowski for eight to ten years, I mean that's what you're kind of trying to build right now. I think yeah. up there in New England, I want I would assume maybe Bill and Josh McDaniels and Matt Patricia watch some film of that Aaron Hernandez and Gronk offense that they had. You know, like, listen, we gotta get back to this. Wait, yeah. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. Can we do that? Well, Hunter Henry's up and Johnny Smith. We can just go spend like two hundred million dollars. All right, let's fucking go, go do it. it. Let's go do it. Kraft's like, I don't want to stink anymore. Uh, Mara's supposed to stink down there at uh, down there at the Giants or whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> hey, that guy's supposed to stink. At these billionaire meetings we go to, that is literally what the Giants owner said, by the way. Yeah. Giants owner said, I'm, I'm sick of having to explain why we stink. Uh, to I would assume that's to his other billionaire friends yeah. on why his franchise stinks. So that's why they started getting in there. Kraft's like, we are never doing what we did last year. Mm-mm. Ever again, go ahead and do it. That is something that never gets talked about, mostly because I think like four or five people died because of one of those tight ends how much uh like looking into like a tight ends background do you think they do now after that like hey no no i don't, sure I don't think so I, I don't i don't anybody. i honestly <laughs> I mean, yeah yeah i don't I know if it's just tight, tight ends, ends. <laughs> yeah i don't know the tight ends but that is because the- there's a lot of conversations and it's fascinating because there are a lot of guys that i have encountered i think that are like and have done and been a part of some you know, pretty reckless shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I, I think I've been in places with some people that I was like, okay, I feel like there's a chance that something could have happened or has happened or will happen in this whole thing. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there is that. But a lot of sports guys, the sport that they play actually keeps them away from a lot of these things. So mm-hmm. although they have a lot of friends and there may be, you know, in sport and football, I think, helps. Now, not everybody. There's a lot of, I think there's a lot of people that have been in gangs and have done some shit, obviously, that have been in the NFL and have made it. And I don't know how, by the way. I don't know how you can be that, like what I heard Aaron was doing off the field. I don't know how he was able to have as much energy and attention and focus to the NFL. It is very difficult to be in the NFL with everything we're hearing about going on outside. So I, I don't think there are, you know, just certain guys around there. Ki- Aaron Hernandez killing, like actually, uh, now he d- no, 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 no. He no, did kill. Not alleged. Yeah. He yeah. did yeah. convicted murder of people and kill. And there's others that are potentially been shot in the past. And his friend got shot in the face one night because of a fight or whatever with him. There, I mean, who knows whatever else was going on? I think whenever that was announced, there was a lot of oh, oh, he's hey, hey he's he he is like, this about, about that, that life. life. Yeah. Like hey, like yeah. real. Truly. Real about that. that. That's crazy. I don't know. And, and there's a lot of guys that are like, I lined up against that guy. Like, I remember giving him a pretty good shot. 
I punch a murderer right there in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And and I, it's hard not to think that. I think we played against Patriots when he was on the team, and I was on, I was like, uh, me and that guy, I wish I would have whatever, and just gave him quick, like, hey, good game or whatever, you know, just so I could say. So I dapped up just a murderer. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be the first, I guess. I guess we learned about a neighbor of ours that, uh, oh, no. I guess, did happen to potentially kill somebody. I don't know if the court date has happened yet, but there's a lot of stories. So that'd be two, I guess. But, yeah, I don't think there's a lot of Aaron Hernandez's now. Now, that leads to this. Whenever you see a headline about Frank Clark for now, I guess it's being reported the second time in like three months or something like that, getting pulled over and then having an Uzi on him, a gun charge, two gun charges in California, which I would assume has pretty yeah. serious gun mm -hmm. laws. This is the second time, I guess, in a short time that he was found with a, a gun in his car. And Uzi was found in his Lamborghini SUV. Okay, shout out uh, to having a Lambo SUV, by the way. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. So it's not easy. It's probably very expensive. You want a Super Bowl, you got a Lambo SUV. A lot of people are saying, why does this guy have an Uzi on him? He's rich. He made money in football. Why does he have this whole thing? Now, there's a couple things. Could be a collector's item. Okay, I have no mm -hmm. idea. I saw a piece of art in Dana White's office that was like an AK that had a full art. Now, I don't know. I don't know if it, it, how this Uzi was. Was it painted, gold-plated? Mm -hmm. Was it a collector maybe for Frank Clark? And maybe for you, it isn't a collector. I'm not collecting Uzis, but maybe this is something that he's into. Or maybe he legitimately had this because he thought somebody was maybe threatening his life or maybe, maybe needed some protection, you know? Uh, T.I. has a song after he got arrested for having a bunch of guns while he was on probation. He said, you can't expect me to live my life like yours because my life ain't like yours okay mm. so the people that were judging him basically were like why you're rich why do you have this you can pay security why do you have the gun in there and he he basically said at the time that uh there was a group that came in and shot up his uh his friend and they had sent him a bunch of warnings he's out of jail now not allowed to have any guns on him but there's an entire group of people that are telling him he's going to kill him so when he got pulled over i think in his house he also had like i think he had like some missiles like a rocket launcher. yeah I, I think he was like <laughs> strapped yeah, I think he was trapped, but a lot of he made an entire song about it. And, and I think listening to that song and I was like, OK, valid point. Now, I don't know why you should have an RPG or a missile in there, but it's hard to necessarily for me to be like Frank Clark is fucking out of his mind for doing this, because although and we said this earlier about the Carl Nassib situation or coming out, not a situation, I guess. I don't want situation has a negative innuendo so not that but you get it that whole thing mm -hmm. where i wish we lived in a time where everybody was like no that's dope that's cool don't worry about it do what you're gonna do mm -hmm. obviously we're not that time yet i think a lot of people think we're already in that time so whenever he says something like that it's like oh it's not a big deal to kind of shoo it off i hope we get to that point that is uh i think like a fairy tale life i think a lot of people live in this especially whenever you think about the entire world people are like oh why are we doing this why are we doing this why is this decision made why is this going on on. It's like, well, not everywhere, okay, is just like all, you know, candy and nuts, okay? Right. Like, I wish that the world was like that. I've been very fortunate. I've gotten to travel and see how some things are in some places. And I believe as a whole, we're all getting better, hopefully. I have no idea. North Korea still exists. Uh, there's still something going on in other countries oh, yeah. as well right. all over the place it's not just like we're at this perfect world and we're obviously not that in america as well and i think more and more we learn whether it's uh you watch local news anywhere there are sections and segments of our society that are nowhere near where we hope to be uh in just a couple years or maybe tomorrow but there's shit that happens that people watch documentaries and movies that's some motherfuckers lives okay yeah, yeah. that is some people's lives it was very i mean i don't I don't know Frank Clark. I don't know him well. I don't know him at all, actually. I just know him as a great football player. Mm -hmm. But then whenever you just automatically attack this guy for being an absolute idiot, it's like, I, okay, hey, valid. Should not have a newsie in his whole thing. Why is he doing it? What's going on? Let's also ask about maybe who's fucking trying, how, who is he potentially tied to? Yeah. Family, friends, neighbors, old friends that he maybe grew up in a neighborhood that isn't perfect. And maybe there's something that is being said to him that we don't know about that he feels the need to protect himself. Once again, not cool that any of this is happening. I just think it comes from like more of an understanding thing. And then two hours after that, another NFL player is literally shot four times 
times while sitting in front of his aunt's house in D.C. And people go, why does he have an Uzi in his Lambo SUV? And then a couple hours later, a man who's in the same league, okay, in the NFL, I, I don't think he has anywhere near uh, made a presence in the NFL yet. He's a pit guy. But no offense to Pitt. Love Pitt. There's been a lot. Of Aaron Donald's an absolute stud. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying this guy's entire thing. So as soon as you hear that, I think it's just a nice little reminder to be like, oh, okay, not everybody's just fucking walking their dog every single day and doing yeah. their thing. There are some portions and places in our world, here in the world in total, in America, where those documentaries and movies are made. And that shit's still happening in some places. And in, for some people in some situations, we hope it isn't. But I think, you know, let's get to a point where Frank Clark never feels like he should have a fucking Uzi, mm -hmm. but also where a guy can go visit his family and not get shot four times. I think that's ultimately what was spotlighted through these two stories. Yeah, and I don't know if he's from California, but like we hear it all the time, these guys make it to the NFL and they Target. want to, they want to help out their communities too. So it's not like I mean, you, no, none of those guys want to be a sellout where it's like, hey, I make all this money and then I just say fuck all these people who are probably struggling struggling that don't just live in like suburban America. It's like, hey, some of these places are like legit rough and these guys are trying to invest some of their time and money back into it so that they can try to change shit like yeah this. it's just a uh it's just one of those things where as soon as you see an uzi and a lambo my first thing was like i got an uzi and a lambo <laughs> yeah. like, that was my first thought because by the way rap songs we uh -huh. listen to rap songs those lyrics although the person rapping them might not live the life that they are saying or portraying somebody does they got the inspiration from somewhere it's just i think this is more of like uh hey this is how some people feel like they have to survive which is not great obviously you're in the nfl this long you've had this amount of success you've been this good you hope you've been able to sever ties somehow but sometimes that is just not possible that is not something that's cool and we all have kind of experienced that in life i think but goddamn what did that uzi look like we, we oh, get a photo geez. we get a photo of every uzi Probably that gets sweet scope on it i'm sure you remember those ones that old chapo had chapo had some <laughs> desert eagle desert gold eagle, yeah. plated mm -hmm. and then he had this suit i mean these I, it's, I think for them, that's their art, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got so much money, how do we spend it? Oh, I'd like to hang a... Hey, it'd be cool to get a fucking gold plate of 50 cal. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. right, that would be insane. Well, and it happened to Marshawn Lattimore, too, earlier in the offseason where the, he got pulled over and they, he had weapons in the car with some of his buddies and the cops were like, hey, look, I know you're from, you know, a certain area where, you know, this is casual, but, like, this isn't really... Like, you're on a different level now. You're in the NFL. You kind of have to carry yourself a little differently. But, like, when you have guys where you don't know who you're going to be around... Hey, wouldn't, that be disputes, cool? wouldn't that be cool for Marshawn to say to whoever said that to him, oh, is that right? Two people want that guy dead. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And that, that's, that's my brother right there. Uh, before I made it to the NFL, he happened to do something. That person, by the way, just got out of jail. So mm -hmm. yeah. we don't know what's good. Like that would be a, that's the type of thing, by the way, that can happen. Like that, yeah. that legitimately could be happening. And it's insane. You hope it never has to happen and it won't happen. But goddamn, I hope you guys. All right, never get to the point where you got to have Uzis in the SUV. Hey, funny you too. You guys let me know before you get there. Coincidentally, Marshall Lattimore and Frank Clark went to the same high school, so in Cleveland. There you go. There you have it. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so who knows who's out to get who around Ted there? Ted dad was their coach at Glenville. Oh, track too, I think, yeah, right? Yeah. They, mm -hmm. That was where Ted talked about the track and yep. everything he did there. Had to run. What a crazy place. Let's get to a phone call here before hour one wraps up. But I think that is something, you know, as we continue to learn stuff, I think we should, you know, definitely, definitely not be cool with it. Mm, be like, no. hey, this isn't cool. But let's go ahead and maybe get the shovel out and let's dig a little deeper. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let's see. How do we, you know what I mean? Instead of selling uh, the gold, you know, that people may be fine, let's look at the axe. There it is. You know, there what's you getting us to this point? Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and look a little bit deeper, you know? Get beneath the topsoil. By the way, not a bad metaphor. No. <laughs> I forget who said Look it. Look at the axe. I think it was Lou said it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think Lou, <laughs> I think Lou said, uh, Lizzie, you ask, don't sell the gold. No, no, no. You sell the axe. I was like, well said. Bingo. Like right? that. <laughs> Fucking yeah. bingo. Hour one wrapping up here on the other side. We got AJ Hawk and Ian Rappaport. Here we go. Hey, we've had some real conversations today. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Now, once again, I do feel like I am one of the limited amount of humans 
and this sounds bad, especially in 2020, where I feel like I've gotten the incredibly lucky, fortunate run of getting to meet and see a lot of things. And I also, you know, go in with a very like, hey, how we doing? You know, yeah. so I <laughs> learn a lot of stuff, I think. I've been very lucky. And if I can be a little small part of, you know, an education thing that we can make the whole world better, I'm cool with it. Well, and there are a few people who have had like the range of experiences that you have to the point where you can speak on I drank stuff. wine with billionaires. <laughs> yeah. I've smoked black and miles with dudes from Compton. <laughs> I had that as a promo one time, but I I was gonna go do an independent wrestling thing. And by the way, all my promos, they're shoots, brother. All right, we're back <laughs> in six minutes. Hour two is on the other side. This is the Pat McAfee Show. I think I've realized this year with the conversations, you do seem to be a rather normal human, which is very interesting, right? I assume for a lot of people to hear. AJ said, no, you're not a normal human. But because all the stories about you before this year, to be honest, a lot of people, the way they believed is you were the smug king almost is what the thing about it. And then getting a chance to chat with you, it's like, well, that's not the case at all. How is that like something you have to focus on? I assume it gets hard whenever you're hanging out with, you know, Scott Stapp is hanging Aaron Rodgers jerseys up in his goddamn office. That has to be pretty weird. Well, look, I think that's an interesting, interesting thing to, to talk about. I think a lot of times, uh, you know, people have said things about me, and it's been the same few people, and that's been kind of the prevailing story or thing that's reflected on. Um, I think for me, you know, I talk a lot about the work I did on myself. It was nice, and it wasn't intentional. Like, I didn't sign the show to have, like, and you guys know, we've talked about this off, off air, but there wasn't, like, some agenda doing this. It was, like fucking talk to Pat and AJ every week? Yeah. Sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it has been, by the way. It sounds amazing. But what it's allowed me to do is I think silence all the douchebags out there who were, you know, talking for me and making themselves more relevant by using my name or, you know, running with stories that were not really based in any type of fact. And look, I've grown as a person. Uh, you know, I've said things and done things that I wish I'd handle a little better, but this was a great natural, authentic, like whatever, whether it was 15 minutes at the stadium or 45 minutes to just like bullshit and have a conversation. You know, if you're a friend of mine, if you know me, I think this is about as normal as interaction you're gonna see from me. It's not a lot of BS. You're not gonna hear cliches and garbage. I'm gonna, you know, shoot from the hip mostly. Tell you as much as I feel comfortable telling. I feel like I've been as honest as I could be. I've told you guys a lot of fun stuff. It's fun for me because then I don't have to like maybe rehash it on a Wednesday or people get to see a different side of you that maybe they didn't even know was there or didn't think was there. And it's been it's been fun for me. I really have. I've appreciated every single week we've done these. And like I said, the best part is there was no agenda. There was no plan. I mean, even us, like we didn't know we were gonna go like ten minutes or fifteen minutes or an hour. Or, like we just started fucking talking, right? And then this this came out. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. Okay. What's his pressure? Okay. Okay. Oh my God. Best sign spinner in the world! At least now, he says, that was unbelievable. Uh -huh. Bro, yeah. thank you for what you just did right there. Him, what's your name? Mike. Mike, where are you from? Right here in Los Angeles. That was fucking awesome to watch. Good luck out there, they should be paying you more. <laughs> Tune in for the World Sign Spinning Championship in Vegas. There's a World Sign Spinning Championship? In Vegas. Are you like a national, are you a champion? I rank. You rank? What do you rank? Uh, I got eight in the 2013 Olympics. What do we have to do to get better? How do we get to first place? What are, what's the new move? <laughs> what's the new move? Maybe light it on fire. Yeah, well, I don't know. Who's going to this one? Oh! Least now! Oh my god! 
<laughs> if I was getting to the end with the kickflip, I don't know how you're eighth in the world. You should be number one. And if I was leasing a place, I'm fucking coming here. <laughs> oh my. Sir? Ah, good evening. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Welcome. To Friday Night Smackdown Throwback Edition! The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to this show. This show. Woo! This show, hour two, begins immediately following the beat drop from a guy named Twan. Pow! Yeah. Um, it's great to have you all back listening and watching wherever the hell you may be. Gumpy's here. Diggs is here. The Hammer Down Boys joined us 20 minutes ago. I appreciate you guys getting your work done. Kind of find winners. Uh, Gumpy wearing a Death Row record shirt. Okay. <laughs> Shook Knight. How you doing? Keep it moving. Uh, how's the betting going? Euro's still happening? Yep. Two and one Euros yesterday. Three and one baseball. Five and two day yesterday. Okay. Yeah, you're back. Yeah, he's back. Hey, he's all the way back. Yeah. Woo! Gumpy, you do take it hard, man. You do. That England one took my soul, man. Because that felt like the 0-0 zero, zero draw. It was everybody against soccer. It was the worst thing that could have happened. So you, it was. I, it was. I, I want to let you know, I, I appreciate the fact that you have passion for yeah. that. You know, because you were fighting two battles there. Yeah. Not only was it for England. Well, three, I guess. Yeah. You're fighting for England, the song... It's coming home, coming home, football coming home. You're fighting for that song because you were forcing us to listen to that thing pretty loud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, on a regular basis, you're fighting for that. And you're fighting for the sport itself. Yeah. That was three potential things that you love. No, not potential. Three things you love that you were fighting for against almost all fronts. And it lost all three of them. But like, I, I don't think, I don't think you should take it that. I don't think you should take it. I don't think you should take it that hard, though. I, I don't I like you beating yourself up like this. You have so many wins, dude. When you get your L's, like, hey, they're gonna happen, especially mm -hmm. in the world you're in. Yeah. Just need you to just get by, you know, and get back on that. It's coming home, horse. Yeah. And get back on that. England trained for another sport, yeah. not soccer in the Euros. Now you guys still gonna win? Hey, we go again today. We're through to the round of 16 because of what happened yesterday. Yesterday, you just got to get to the dance. Okay, so you guys are playing today? Yeah, it doesn't matter, though. Betting against England today. No, uh, yeah. I, I'm not a soccer bet. <laughs> no, no. Who is it? What? Who are they playing? Oh, I don't know. I'm <laughs> saying, Czechs. wow, you're betting Czech against Czech Republic. England. The Czech? Oh, yeah. The Czechs are Ooh. feisty this year. Yeah, hey, they, they still got Peter up there? Peter Czech? <laughs> yeah. No. 
He's done. He's got the <laughs> sweet he, he, helmet. He put his helmet away. He's oh. done. Oh, God, he's know. very upset about the COVID issues, though. Who? Peter Check. He well, came out this morning. He's not happy. Well, who has COVID issues? So the guy on Scotland got it. None of Scotland's players have to sit out, but two players on England have to sit out and have to isolate with negative tests. Hold on. So because they were on the same position, like it was one, yeah. a striker and a middle back. Because they played on the same field. Just none two, of his teammates. None of his teammates, just two guys from England with negative See, tests. And that's why the game should be a lot shorter. Okay? Listen, Ooh. games are so goddamn long that doctors said, how long were you with your teammates? Not as long as a fucking game, right? <laughs> no, no way. You guys traveled here from the hotel together, got in the locker room, then what? Game started. So you can't be around the other team, actually, because you guys aren't around each other nowhere near as much as you are on the other. Because they're just standing next to each other the entire time. Wherever you go, I go. We're in the pocket. In that kind of whole thing. Yep. So two guys are out from England, one from Scotland. So the one guy that's out for England is Mason Mount, who played the full game in the middle of the midfield against Gilmore on Scotland. But Ben Chilwell, who has to sit out, has not played for England yet in the tournament. It makes no sense. <laughs> Unless he's in the same room as Mason. Oh, Mount. he barracks with. Yeah. He uh, barracks with. Yeah. yeah. Share the bunk. Hey, he's staying in the bunk. They probably got a bunk bed, I assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you're on the top two, COVID rises like he. Oh, that's true. Right. Uh, so he's probably sleeping on top bunk. He's yeah. sleeping mm. on the bottom there. There it is. There's no problem because COVID doesn't fall. Mm. But full capacity for the semi and the final at Wembley. Oh, yeah, 60,000. Let's go. go. Let's I go. saw Pink perform there on a documentary at Wembley two oh nights. How's she doing? Sweet. She fucking crushed it, dude. Great she, voice. That documentary is awesome. Also, Kerry Hart, the uh, motocross legend. Dude. Of course. Yeah. He's dad of the year every year, it seems like. He's fucking awesome. They still together? Back. Huh? They still together? Yeah, and my ex going to start a fight. My ex is going to start a fight. I think that was about him oh, yeah. in the song, but they have gotten back together. They oh, that's good nice. Yeah, so they've gone through it in the spotlight. It's pretty good cool. Ending. Joining us now is another famous couple, a uh, member of a famous couple. Oh, yeah. Uh, you remember the a split jersey in half, yep. yeah. whatever. This guy played against uh, his wife's brother. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. Yeah! 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 Split jersey, dude. Yeah, I remember that. Hey, why are you uh, judging people that like to piss on others earlier in the show? I didn't judge. I'm just saying, like, what, what happens yeah, behind closed doors is like not the conversation. I, no, I'm just saying, what happens behind closed doors is not the conversation. You know, yeah. that that's everybody's like, why do I got to hear about what happens behind closed doors with, like, Carlos? Like, it's not what happens behind closed doors. It's who they live as a human. So it's like, it's not, it's a much different conversation. Like, what happens behind closed doors in some houses, apparently, I just learned something about that celebrity couple. Yeah, there geez. are people that potentially piss on each other. Do whatever you got do hey you golden shower however you need to shower pal right if that's what you want to do i find it very fascinating i laughed rather hard whenever i had a conversation with person who introduced that thing into my life i laughed but if that's what you're doing it's all right with me pal it's just separating the two aj it's separating the two church like, and state. like an adult here you know what i mean it's like an adult here I, mean, I don't understand the, the church and state reference but no i'm not saying that's what i do but i'm saying <laughs> if you've thought of it Somebody's done it, you know. There's all kind of crazy stuff out there. So, I who am I to judge? Oh, I know. Somebody you're welcome. You, you've so, actually what? introduced. It's like food. Numerous like, things. Yeah. yeah. You. I can't judge you for your you, palate. You are right. the person that has introduced these things into my with life. No judgment. With, with no judgment, though. Me neither, by the way. But I'm sitting there. I'm just sitting there, and all of a sudden, basically, if I've only been around this guy what one time, uh -huh. two times. Yeah. The, every time I'm around him, basically, whenever we're running, he just takes his phone and shoves there it in my face. Look, 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 Chuck Berry. Like, oh, look, 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 look at this guy. Look at this guy. Oh, this is cool. This happens. <laughs> That's what you do to me. So I, I don't need to hear it from you, pal. But you're right. No judgment is ever from you or from us. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of, you need to know this is out there. I think that's your whole big thing. You need to know this is out there. Is that it? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, you grew up somewhat sheltered, kicking a soccer ball off the wall. So you just little things that a lot of people know. I just like to make you aware of them. Uh, I don't think that is accurate either. <laughs> I, I feel like, uh, you know, there's, let's move along here. Um, Tom Brady's statement. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. Oh, let's talk. Hey, Carl. I talked about this earlier, and I'm not 100% sure I wasn't in your locker room. I was asked to speak for the Colts locker room when the Michael Sam draft happened uh, about what it would be. The, the response that I got overwhelmingly from teammates and coaches was, comes in, works, part of the team, 
We can't wait to have him. Blah. That's basically the thought. It doesn't matter anything else. Uh, but there was obviously a couple guys around the NFL who said some negative things. That blew up. Those headlines blew up, I think. And now, with Carl being voted a captain before and a great player, this is obviously a huge ordeal. I was not in the Packers locker room, never have been in any of the locker rooms you have been in. Although I sometimes, oh uh, no, I wish we would have been teammates together for sure on a team. What, what were your thoughts on this? And I assume whenever Michael Sam was drafted, uh, there was conversations in your locker room as well. Absolutely, because you're getting asked about it a lot by the media. So you, you want to know, I guess, what what to expect. But it, like everything in football, if you can play, people don't care. If you're a good teammate and you can play and you can help the team win, trust me, players do not care anything about really what goes on outside of that facility as long as you show up and you do your work and you're a professional. So I don't think it's going to be a big deal at all. I, I know that sometimes we talk about the drama, okay? We have to talk about the drama of sport because it happens. And normally the drama happens with the super high, high, high level humans. That is not the life of everybody else necessarily on the roster that we don't get to talk about or hear about, whether it's contract holdouts or not doing anything else, not wanting to be at this. Everybody else just, everybody just wants to win. No matter what your motives are, whether it's for more money, guess what? If you win, guess what's coming more money if you play good football guess what's coming more money if you want to win in legacy and everything like that guess what you just want to win that's all you want to do so i think that is where the potential and i think this happened during the michael sam draft as well is there's maybe a couple guys that were asked questions and they maybe had never had a friend or somebody in their life uh, that was gay and they had no idea and they said something and then all of a sudden boom it's like the NFL locker room is closed minded and there's some people that want to want it's like I disagree I actually think the football locker room is like that's what it's for like it's for everybody you know like it really think of is. the diversity like think of the, you've talked about it a million times like you go in a locker room it's unbelievable you sit down and listen to every guy's story on where they've come from, what they've been through, and it's such a wide range. And they're all together trying to fight for one common thing. That's the goal of a coach, a leader. So I, I think like there's nothing too crazy, really, for an NFL locker room that anyone's going to be shocked at or going to be like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this. I, and then there's people that are talking like, um, well, what about in the showers? It's like, what are you even talking about? Like, showers is a is a business operation. It just so happens to be every single day. If your facility, I mean, could build, hey, technically, yeah. I mean, there could, if, if your facility could build private showers for every single player, yeah. that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I assume guys, would, but that's just commonplace. The shower, and as weird as this might sound uh, to people that have never been in, that is just a common, like, that is just a happening. Like, hey, that is just, uh, so, like, that doesn't change anything from outside the shower, inside, that's the, that is not a, I don't think that is a... No one gives it any thought. Like no, it's not even a thing. Yeah, I don't think anybody would be like, hey, I'm not going in when uh, old buddy's going in. It's like, you don't want... To, are you going to check... Are you going to check him out? Yeah, what's going to... What's going to... What, what's going... Like, I don't... I don't think that's how the shower is. By the way, it's a place... It's a place of business. This has to happen. Okay, if not, guess what? This whole place smells like shit. Mm -hmm. All right? And we have a couple teammates, I assume you had as well, who didn't like the shower or whatever. And there had to be, like, real conversations. Like, hey, listen, you're making a whole team worse whenever you decide to do what you're doing right now. Okay? It's tough to sit by you. There's an entire shower right there just... One just once a week, maybe once twice a week. Just do what you got to do. Pop get in. in there. But yeah, I think that is just. Uh, I think all the things that are brought up about why everybody thinks it would not work in an NFL locker room are actually the exact reasons why an NFL locker room is just fucking like such a cool place because it's like everything you're thinking of is basically what makes the locker room cool. It's like we're just all in this thing together. Let's keep it moving. Now, if he stinks. Hey, if he stinks, I think everybody in the locker room is going to be like, okay, listen, we appreciate, we appreciate the hell out of you for being uh, completely yourself and honest with us, but you can't fucking play football. You stink if not performing. You see, and so I think there, that, that, that could potentially happen in the future. Hopefully there'll be more players that are comfortable, especially after Carl did his thing. And that is going to have to be something. Now, Michael Sam, I have no idea what happened there. That was obviously years ago. I didn't do that, but it's just... I think it's cool. Uh, I'm excited for him, and it came out of nowhere. Uh, uh, Lamar Jackson, okay, he posted a photo of him throwing on Instagram. 
All right. And a lot of people on the internet immediately go, oh, he didn't post a video. Smart. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody's saying. He didn't post a video because the internet is a dumb place. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what the internet is. And you're going to find the dumb people in our society if you look around on the internet. What we have to do is just go ahead and sort through them. All right. We just got to understand that they exist. This is us acknowledging in our society that there are fucking doofuses okay oh, yeah, absolutely this is something that does happen and they do have access to say things in public on a public forum in their in their hands and in on desks or in computers or whatever we just have to acknowledge that there are going to be some idiots and we just got to take that we just got to take mm -hmm. that sometimes for me i get attacked a lot all fronts mm -hmm. okay and i realize the more people that see me there's hey guess what much higher chance more people going to hate me. More students. Like, hey, that's going to happen. Yeah. Like, you, we just got to understand that there's going to be some of that and keep it moving. I want to see Lamar post him slinging that thing. I know. Because I, I think the Baltimore Ravens social media team, and I don't know how they are normally. Okay, this might have just been an anomaly, a mistake. I think they did him wrong by showcasing that one throw that they did. And I don't want that to make Lamar gun shy because guess what, Lamar? You are perfect for the internet, everything you do. Uh, so I don't want him to be bullied by the internet right now into not posting videos. AJ, I hope that's not the case, obviously. Well, I mean, we can only hope it's not the case. It's, it's a pretty amazing argument you have for this fact, just the fact that he posted a still shot, which I'm sure he got from the, the, uh, the team and he thought it looked cool with the background, everything looks good, the ball's in there, the laces, you can see everything. Like, do you think Lamar thought about this? Like, hey, I better not post a video. No. I want to critique my throwing. Story. I mean, I hope not. But they remember, There's they, no way. There's they no way. banned. Hey, they banned video being released from their practices. Yeah. They banned it. I, I mean, mean, it was fantastic. It's weird. It's weird, but it's all right. They probably know, like, hey, you could, you could, doctor, you could take any throw or anything somebody's working on, and then it can kind of, like, change the narrative on one of our guys. Yeah. I mean, editing can do some things, you know, certainly. Did or if you, you threw 10 touchdown passes during the team period, but he threw a pick and seven on, and the guy posts that. Hey, listen, I'll go kick some balls, all right? I'll go 10 for 16 on good punts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Guess what's getting posted? 10 of those things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There ain't 16. I'm sorry. It didn't have six more slides. I wish it did. Can't post it. Editing can, you know, paint whatever picture you really want when it comes to highlights and things like that. I just know that Lamar Jackson is an edited highlight tape every fucking time he goes on the field, it seems like. Even when he goes off the field, takes a poop, comes back on the field. Yeah. It is met. He's going to get paid a lot of money. I guess that is something that is happening currently. Mm -hmm. Connor, what did we read this morning? There's uh, something is into work. So, yeah, Garofalo was reporting how, you know, the Ravens' number one priority is to extend Lamar Jackson. And now uh, Lamar Jackson is negotiating his contract actually on his own with him and his an mom. Agent. I believe his mom his is mom. his agent, right? Okay. I think, because uh, she was with him on draft night, remember? And that was yeah, she uh, was when he was coming out. His mom was his agent, right? Yeah, that was a big story. Uh, I think that his yeah. mom was his agent. So his mom and Lamar are handling business with Baltimore, which is why, okay, this makes a lot more sense now. I had forgot that she was his agent because when Harbaugh came out and it came out that they were negotiating a long-term contract mm -hmm. extension it was being talked about as if it was like a done deal was happening that's probably because this is personal and this is business with your star quarterback so publicly you have to this has to be a very comfortable thing on both sides this and, and they're saying this is the first time obviously at this magnitude that a deal is being worked by the player and by the personal relationship mom or whatever it has to be handled differently this isn't you're not going to some suit who's getting paid and then you're you're unloading and then that suit is choosing how to deliver the information so that there can potentially be a conversation so a deal can get done because that is the goal ultimately for the agent now it's straight to the person now there's no hiding behind oh i didn't say that that was that was misunderstood miscommunicated now it's everything you say publicly about it is being heard and everything you say privately is being heard and if your public statements aren't matching your private statements you can obviously see how a quarterback and a mom could be like hey fuck you yeah. this is this is awesome i'm very pumped that lamar and his mom are doing this this is good business this is instead of uh, any potential narrative painting which some teams do where we offered more money than ever blah 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 and they turned it down now we're going to chance to see how like hey this is good business here now this is lamar 
in the Ravens. They're going to try to make the most of it. I assume Baltimore's going to try their best in clauses and shit to do stuff. If I was Lamar and his mom, and they've already negotiated millions and millions of dollars of deals, so this is not me trying to give any advice at all. I'm just saying, in my particular world, whenever I have to do this sort of thing, I tell them I, I don't want all that bullshit, okay? I want, I would like this to be a basic deal, okay? This is, this is you and me, all right? This is the basic deal. I need to see it. I don't need 4,000 <laughs> pages mm -hmm. of stuff. I'm not gonna read it. You know who reads that? Lawyers do so that other lawyers can stay in business. I'm not doing that, okay, in this particular deal, so it can't happen. We need this to be pretty simple. I. There has to be that sort of conversation potentially happening as well for as simple as an NFL contract can go. The shit that lawyers can put on things that can just absolutely change it. I think that's the only question mark. And Lamar and his mom have already proven that they can dominate those conversations. This is just for other players that are potentially thinking about doing it themselves. Yeah, but don't you think the Ravens also have extra incentive to keep the relationship good with Lamar seeing what happened Tom Brady leaves leaves uh, New England after so long we see what's going on with Aaron right now it's up in the air like they want to make sure I would imagine that Lamar is happy with the deal too and it's not it's a fair bargain between both of them but when will this thing get done do we have any idea great question joining us now is a senior insider at NFL.com and NFL Network he's the host of a show that is currently in hiatus for some time now and for the foreseeable future, ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rapper. Yay! What's up, dude? Sad but true. What's up, dude? How you doing? What's going on? I'm doing great, man. What's Summer is here. It's the best ever. Yeah, it is the best ever. And we got some real shit to talk about, especially uh, with Lamar Jackson. Let's get to it. I was going to ask you about your shirt because you had the Mississippi State Bulldog on last time and that garnered some ripples on the internet. Was that a Mets shirt? Uh, Mets today, yeah. People always ask me what I what I root for, and there's really only two things. I root for the Mets, um, which is also sad but true. Yeah, they're in a um, yeah. That's First my place. lifelong, Some you know, fan. whatever. Yeah, and in then in I root for Mississippi State because that is my wife's alma mater. Uh, and I, besides the fact that I like a lot of the people there and I truly like them, I also want to stay married. Um, so it is a personal and a business decision. Okay, respect and smart. The Mets will be the Pirates without DeGrom, but let's uh -huh. move on. Um, Lamar Jackson negotiating his own deal <laughs> alongside – I couldn't hear you. The thing's dead, so whatever you said there, good. <laughs> it was good. I wish I could have laughed. But um, Lamar Jackson – and it's a professional show, Ian. Fucking get it together, dude. All right? Uh, Lamar and his mom negotiating this deal with Baltimore. This is – a big time contract. It's going to be hundred, at least a hundred and some million dollars. The conversation revolves around. There's been very public, you know, s statements, knowledge. It feels like from the Ravens side that a deal is going to get done. And it's going to be big. And I wondered why. And I'd forgot that Lamar and his mom were their business team. Over. They want this to be good, public and private, huh? Head. This is your quarterback. This is your quarterback's mom. This has to be handled much differently than whenever you're going through an agent with lawyer speak and burials, right? Don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a good read on it because it's not, you know, like if if you're you're heading into a contract negotiation with your starting quarterback, powered agent, you know, like Josh Allen's doing it with some of the guys from CAA, for instance, for Dacos with Todd France. I mean, you know, agents a lot of times, uh, agents a lot of times sort of act as the buffer for teams to players. So if you're really pissed off about some counter offer, you scream at the agent and talk about why you're going to, put him out of business or whatever you want to say. And then the player generally has no idea and the relationship is good. It is a little different with Lamar Jackson because it is his mom sort of acting as his business partner, business manager, which of course everybody went bananas about during the pre-draft process. And he still went in the first round and uh, somehow was able to negotiate still his rookie deal. Not a ton of negotiation, but you know, millions still they, of they got it done. Yep. Millions yeah. Of millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. I mean, the money was set, but still like you got to make sure it's right. Um, I, you know, Lamar is seeing the same sort of eyebrows raised from the agent community and from players as well because his mother is doing it. Um, it is a lot of pressure. It is unbelievably difficult. The stakes are incredibly high because if you lock yourself into a bad deal, you could be costing yourself tens of millions of dollars. It has happened. Um, it has happened. And, you know, we'll see, we'll see which way it goes. I mean, it is going to be big. And the Ravens do very good deals often for the Ravens. So this is probably the one that is most fascinating of all the deals for me. 
What do you think Lamar's contract looks like compared to, say, what Josh Allen's contract is going to be? I mean, I think some of it depends on when it's actually done, because usually the guy who goes first, um, you know, gets jumped by the next guy. And, you know, I would imagine just considering, you know, CAA wanting to have the highest paid quarterback, I would imagine they will probably uh, I would imagine they'd probably like to see Lamar go first. Uh, hey, hey, and- you've done that twice now, by the way, you've you've dropped. Uh, CA there. So there is a behind the scenes big time competition happening amongst these uh, agencies when it comes to, like football contracts, NBA contracts, and everything like that. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, is it like and it's not you know, CA just happens to have Josh Allen. <laughs> we did it. You know, athletes Everybody. first has Todd France, etc. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Lamar Jackson has his mom, and so that's why. Like, I think they hey, the can Jackson. get it done. I think the yeah, the Jackson agency is trying to get on the score. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Just say, hey. Jackson Incorporated. Right. Whatever it is. Like Rich Paul. But or, yeah. it yeah. is. Mm-hmm. He's the highest. It's, yeah. it's difficult. And a lot of eyeballs are going to be watching because, you know, it's if they do a bad deal, it probably sets the quarterback mark. You know, if he gets if he ends up getting, I don't know, let's say 36 a year. Right. I think everybody would be like, hmm, like, OK, that's. Good, hey. but Dak got 40, and he's, you know, Lamar's the MVP. I mean, so, you know, in the agent community, um, because they're doing it without an agent, everyone's watching. Okay. We've seen this all work right, out all right. well. Hey, let's get to this real quick. You know? Let's get to this. Okay. So let's say they negotiate a good deal. Are you going to cover yeah. it the same way? Are the, these agents going to get pissed off at you for covering it, that Lamar's mom was able to negotiate a perfect deal, or is it is it probably going to be a little slanted towards maybe the deal could have been better? Is that is that is that <laughs> well, – no, that that's actually that's not a bad question because obviously you know like me and the people like me talk to agents a lot, um, but the numbers are going to be what the numbers are going to be. Like I've I've done I would say like fairly extensive reporting on a Fancy, couple of the yeah, other big time contracts that mm-hmm. were done by people without agents. Laramie Tunsil right, right. got a massive deal, yes. no agent. DeAndre Hopkins, massive yeah, deal, yeah. no agent. Covered him the same way. Uh, sometimes people from the agent world are very upset about that, but. The numbers are what they are, um, and they all get their time anyway, so I will probably cover it the same. Zito just looked up um, Felicia Jones is her name. If I'm one of these yep. agencies, I'm I'm trying to buy her agency. Isn't that what all the agencies do anyways? They just buy up smaller agencies and become these bigger agencies. I'd be buying up Felicia Jones' agency at least before this deal is done and being like, hey, listen, remember, we also got some uh, potential blackmail in this that you might not have, okay? We can potentially, <laughs> we can maybe do this Ooh. type of thing as well. That's because... I didn't even think about this sets the like Josh Allen. He hasn't really talked. He, he's just said it's going to get done. People will get it done. It'll get done. I'm focused on this. And I don't think the bills have come out and said that's going to get done soon. This one, Garrett Fowler reported and said that it's going to be done before training camp, potentially. So I wonder if Josh Allen's camp is legitimately CAA camp is like, OK, let's let Lamar go first here and then we'll go. And that, hey, he won an MVP. Buffalo Bills have had, you know, back-to-back playoff runs. They look like they're in a good spot. That money potentially going to be near each other. I, I think that's that's probably yeah. a good move. But whatever Lamar's is, it is going to set the day. What if he goes fully guaranteed like Kirk Cousins goes? That was something that, you know, didn't really affect the overall market at all, right? Uh, it was precedent-setting, but because it was an actual free agent quarterback, and that, you know, free agent quarterbacks rarely happen like for your – real legitimate starting quarterback. Um, no, obviously no offense to Fitz and Andy Dalton. I'm just saying it was a little different when Kirk Cousins was out there. Um, that sort of set the precedent, but it didn't really affect the market much. Um, I'd be surprised if the Ravens did a deal like that. They are very, very good at making sure their deals are Raven friendly. Yeah, but they can't. Um, they can't. They can't be super Raveny. They can't in this because if it comes out, you know, and it's public and it, like that's gonna affect the relate. Like that's what I'm thinking. I, I might be wrong in this whole it's still thing. Still gonna be a ton no. of money though. It's still be a ton of money. It's not no. structured, isn't it? Right, but no, Pat's right though because we saw this with Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers. They did a deal that was the 49ers won that deal by a lot. And um, and I don't, you know, this isn't a value judgment. This is literally what it just what it is. Uh, it significantly hurt the career of Colin Kaepernick's agent Scott Smith at the time. He's not in the business anymore. Like that was a, and then it, that was, you know, that that was one where I think Kaepernick probably realized that he agreed to a deal that he should not have pretty quickly, and then made it difficult. 
So how much leverage does does uh, Lamar have in this whole situation? Do you think they have the upper hand? Does he? Like, who's going to win? I guess. I mean, I, I, I have a hard time saying who has more leverage because let's just say Lamar says, "Hey, man, I'm playing it out. Sorry, you couldn't offer me anything. I'm playing it out." And then he goes and just kills it. They got him some weapons. Yeah, but think you about know, this. Think about this. Think about this. They offered him. He turned it down. Okay. So then he heard what exactly directly from his mom and he doing business, he heard exactly how much they valued him versus somebody else. So if he was to do, as opposed to a, hey, that's not a good enough deal, I'm not even gonna present that to Lamar, which by the way which happens, happens happens in business. Yep. That happens in business a lot. I do business uh, with the folks, J Jeff Jacobs are sitting right here. There are a lot of things that he potentially gets that he goes, I am not even okay, because you will be cut out of his orbit forever <laughs> if, if we if we do that. And that's something where I hope, I guess a lot of people can separate, you know. They can separate church and state, you know, they can separate the value of somebody putting on you versus the personal relationship. But it's very difficult, I learned. It is very, very difficult for me not to be like, hey, fuck you, actually. So that's gonna be fast. I don't think there'll ever come a time where he turns down and says, you know what, I'm gonna play through one more year. And then he comes back. Cause I think at that point he said, what more do I have to do to prove I just it's it is different. Like this is a this is a very different thing they have to kind of wade through because personal relationships, you know, that is business basically at this point. So it's I, I if it's a couple hundred million, I guess that kind of cures all, but still it's like this could be tough for them. Let's talk about some other stuff going on in the world. Uh talking agents, lawyers, legals. Um Aaron Hernandez once threatened to kill you in public. I did not know that. We just found that this yeah, morning. Yeah, what? Oh, yeah. I, I had no idea. We just saw a headline. I guess it was from way back in the day. Is this yeah. real? Former Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez once threatened to murder prominent NFL reporter Ian Rappaport in front of a uh, crowd. Sportscasting.com reported that. We saw a headline only on Instagram, by the way. Uh, I don't I mean, know about the prominent part, but sure. Uh, uh, did that happen? Uh, it happened sort of. So... I mean, yes, like the words were used. And so I told this story it was when Hernandez died. Sort of. I mean, you'll, you'll see. Anyway, Hernandez died, uh, and a Sports Illustrated reporter called me because she knew that I'd covered him. And I kind of told this story, and I'm sure this has happened to you too. Like, I said it, and as soon as I said it, I was like, oh, shoot, this is probably going to be a headline. Because, like, which was definitely not my do intention. That. So what happened was we were, Hernandez and I were cool. Um, we were not best friends, but like we had each other's numbers and we talked and he was like, you know, definitely a little edgy. Um, but we were cool, you know, like, and, um, at some point, you know, and I think this was actually when he was giving me his number, he was like, look, like, okay. you know, you're my guy. I appreciate you. Um, you know, I'm, you got to do right by me. Um, you know, I trust you. And if you don't, you know, I'll kill you. <laughs> And Whoa. I kind of like laughed and he didn't laugh that much. And then I looked at this other reporter who was staying there and he kind of goes like this. And then yeah, yeah. So as soon as Hernandez got arrested, I get a text from that other reporter who was like, do you think he was serious? I, was like, <laughs> I don't know. Did, did, so, so he you know, says threatened that. sort of. Hey, so rap sheet, he says that and then you guys dap up or it's just a walk away. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, you know, the. Yeah. Hey, I'll you do him. that, I'll kill you. He said that to that right. one guy. Hey, you do something in my car, uh -huh. I'll shoot you in the face. And, and he did. And he did. Hey, I'm he happy did. you didn't do him wrong, Ian. It's great to have you here on this Tuesday, June 22nd. That's an insane connection to a pretty large story in the NFL's history. Shout out to you, Rap Sheet. Let's talk about two stories happening right now. Uh, Uzi and a Lambo, and then on the same night when everybody was attacking Frank Clark for potentially, why does he have an Uzi? Another NFL player was shot four times going to see a family member in D.C. <clears throat> in D.C. That was not like a... That was just, is, are my vocal cords quitting? June Potentially. Buck. No. It wasn't June Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. What are the updates on these stories? These are obviously alarming headlines. Uh, Frank Clark yeah. allegedly now has been caught with uh, in gun possession two times in the last few right. months. Yeah. Do we know what's going on, why this is happening, and what's the future look like here? All right, well, let's start with uh, Jalen Twyman, who's a late round pick from the Vikings, defensive tackle that I think most people probably had not heard much of before this happened he was so he's visiting a relative in dc he was apparently according to his agent drew rosenhouse in a car 
and got shot four times. Uh, Rosenhaus called him an innocent bystander, which is to say that he believes that his client did not do anything wrong. He is, uh, I'd have to check, but I believe he's still in the hospital, but shot four times, nothing serious, which I guess is sort of easy for me to say, but nothing serious or life-threatening, no broken bones, no ligaments, nothing that will prevent him from playing football, but obviously, like, you know, extremely, extremely scary. And, um, you know, the Vikings were aware of this whole thing. They put out a statement, but um, this is... I would say extremely scary. Yes. Uh, but hopefully he is going to be okay. Okay. And then the fr- also scary situation, Frank Clark, Uzi, and the Lambo. Why is yeah. that? Is somebody coming after I, him? I mean, he was pulled over, I guess, for some sort of like minor car violation. And then the officer looks and sees an Uzi sticking out of his bag. Mm. Um, and then, you know, Love that's it. not okay. Um, but it's even more not okay because this was something that he got in trouble with a couple months ago. I mean, these are the kind of things that can be suspension worthy in the NFL. I mean, or worse. I mean, one, it's a felony gun charge. Yeah, that's I think that's the so biggest like, deal. Forget here. about suspension. Best contract like, too. And right, and lose guaranteed money, and maybe go to jail. Like this is, you know, and, and these are the kinds of things that I mean. There was a time in the NFL when seen players got arrested a lot before the NFL really, really kind of stepped up their support system of of all the and you know. We haven't seen a lot of this now, but this is two gun charges for an extremely high profile, very good player over the span of three months. Like something is obviously wrong. Um, And I don't I don't know what's going to happen, but that is it for one of the best teams in the NFL, a extremely important legal situation. As one NFL player who has been arrested, okay, I'd like to say let's not judge until we hear the whole story here, but that seems like that could potentially be difficult, uh, both not only in court, but also behind the scenes. I, anytime somebody feels like they have to drive around with an Uzi, I just got a lot more questions. I'm like, what? what who, who, is, who is potentially looking for him? And that's, I'm worried about old Frank Clark. Go ahead, Diggs. Uh, Ian, there's a lot of pretty notable veteran names still left left as free agents do you think do they get signed during training camp pre-training camp after training camp to see how players develop and injuries and stuff like that is there a majority of when these guys will get signed yeah it's a bad time to be a free agent um and you're right like the names we got i mean just kind of off the top of my head you know we got uh we got kj Wright, we got richard sherman um let's see who else i got my little list here. we got todd Gurley, we got melvin ingram um, I got a big list over there, these guys. Um, I think probably a couple will sign before camp. But if you're a veteran and you've waited five months or four months to sign because you want $5 million instead of, you know, the minimum plus a signing bonus, you might as well wait till someone gets injured. Like, we're going to see – there's going to be some, like, key linebacker injury, unfortunately, or something like that on, you know, August 4th, and K.J. Wright will be like, I'm glad that I waited. So I think – you know, you might see one or two of these guys sign before camp, but my better guess is you'll see some of these guys wait until they absolutely have to sign. Like if you're Richard Sherman, you've been through 10 training camps, you already didn't get the money you wanted originally, like you should just wait and like maybe the money comes up because somebody has to have you. Ty. Rap sheet, uh, a clip from the shop came out uh, with Brady saying, you know, you're sticking with that motherfucker, talking about some quarterback. And then Dan Patrick reported this morning that the Bears were one of the finalists. We were trying to figure out if it, if he was talking about Nick Foles, if he was talking about Jimmy G with the 49ers. Have you heard anything on, on who Brady might be talking about in that clip and if the Bears were really that close to getting him? I don't think it was the Bears because my understanding of the Bears situation was they were interested in Brady and he kind of didn't want to play in the cold and just wasn't (laughs) – like I don't think the Bears were one of his like really down-to-it finalists. And they definitely didn't stick with Trubisky over Brady. They wanted Brady and he ended up signing in Tampa. So I don't think it's the Bears. I I don't know. Um, I don't know the answer. I think it's – Amazing that Bra- that show is really good. Obviously, my second favorite sort of internet screen-based show um, besides this one. Obviously, no, no, this show is they- not better than the shop. But I appreciate you lying like is that. Is it not? No, oh, now we bad. have to take into question everything you say after that statement. But <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead and finish that. I I have not watched a ton of but that that show, but I will probably watch it this time. 
<laughs> what? Just the hell do you know? Out of his ass. Yeah, what? <laughs> what do you just see the clips? Is that how you say you watch it? Yeah, sound I see like the clips. Me? Okay, yeah, you sound like me too. Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of that. But I actually watch that show because you're getting super high level people talking with other high level people. They're comfortable. It's normally great. And the the Tom Brady Howard Stern interview was unbelievable. And, and I hope this time it is also great. Do you think though that yeah. was about? another team in, in, in you you're thinking it's yeah. the Niners as well it sounds like I I, I kind of don't think it's the Niners I mean the language he used sticking with him makes me kind of think that it was someone who had already been a starting quarterback for that team so maybe that's Jimmy my immediate thought was the Colts oh, cause because the they basically chose Rivers <laughs> and even though like you know, they weren't sticking with him. They had just signed him, but like Rivers was clearly on the downside. All right. And also, Brady likes Jimmy G. So I, I would be a little surprised. I'm, I'm you know, who knows? But I, you, you could say this kind of thing about your friends, but I'd be a little surprised if it was someone he really likes, like Jimmy G. What? Okay. So what you <laughs> just said there, maybe he wasn't talking about um, Phil Rivers, but. He would have had to been introduced to the Colts' interest to Phil Rivers at some point, and then he would have had to say, I'm interested, and then Chris would have said, oh, okay, let's have a conversation, let's talk, and then at some point, if this was, if, if what you're saying is right, right, if what you're saying is right, let's talk, let's talk, and then all of a sudden Chris goes, you know what, hey, that was a good time. Well, now we're going to go a different direction, and then he... Uh, he <laughs> well, I think a lot of what? people knew. I mean, didn't we all know at that point that Rivers was going to the Colts? Like, if I, I mean, it seems like a million years ago, but I felt like we knew that was kind of going to happen probably like in February, right? Just like cars. You must have known. Yep. Uh, yeah, I did know, but I, I also found out later that we potentially picked Phil Rivers over Tom Brady, and I want to let you know my reaction was exactly how it is now. I, I did not know that was as real as it is now. I heard glowing reviews about Phil Rivers as a human, as a teammate, as quarterback, everything like that. That's amazing. I love Phil. I love how competitive he is. Hey, Dad, he cracks me up. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I love every every fudging thing. He was a great interview on here. But man, Tom Brady's available. And then this year, guess what? Julio Jones was available. I, I assume maybe Julio is trying everything. And then Gronk would have been here. And then Antonio Brown would have been here. Damn. With that defense and T.Y., Jonathan Taylor in the backfield alongside <laughs> Mac and everybody else. I mean, it's it's a little frustrating when you say <laughs> shit like that, Rap, but you've been talking out of your ass all day, so I don't know what's real and what isn't. You know what I mean? That's fair. I'll watch the shop. I'll go back. I'll look. I'll, I mean, it seems like a good show. It's just, you know, I got we got a lot of things going. I'm still trying to make it through Breaking Bad, okay? I'm just finished season two, so give me a break. Go ahead, Connor. Rap sheet, any update on the Deshaun Watson front? Because he's posting on IG again, and he's chucking football. So is there anything going on there? There's legals. I did notice that he's back kind of uh, back at it on social media, which, you know, I don't think he really stopped training, but obviously, like, as you get closer to the season, as he gets more and more high profile, like, I've also noticed the Instagram thing. So whatever that is, like, he's back playing and kind of being out there. Um, I don't get the sense any resolution is coming soon. I don't get the sense we'll see one until kind of probably, bef like, maybe, like, right before training camp. Um, teams are still interested. I know some would like him to – kind of wrap up his legal situation, settle, whatever. Uh, we haven't gotten any inclination that he wants to settle um, it, you know, under the circumstances that the opposing lawyer wants, which is with everyone uh, kind of muzzled, you know. Uh, uh, you know so Deshaun, kind of hey, just no get this clear. Just get, okay. Deshaun sure. would settle if everybody was allowed to talk because Deshaun's team doesn't want to settle because the settlement um, agreement – presented by, what's his name? Busby. Busby, Busby yeah. is that everybody would not be allowed to talk going forward. It would be like a NDA type thing. Right. NDA was the kind of thing I was searching for that I couldn't come up with. I got um, you, dude. Yeah, I, I do those. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, I don't know if he definitely <laughs> would settle. Like, I don't know if they have a number, but I know from what I was told that he's not settling unless the accusers are allowed to speak. Um, however they want and unless everything becomes public like full transparency is important and that seems like that is what he is fighting for. hey Ian do you have an a you have an agent I do I'll see you've never been in the room you, you have no you, hey you, you have you ever sat down you've never done the uh, Ian you don't go in there and do it yourself aren't, aren't you you've never done that you've never got curious on how that whole thing goes um, 
I know. I, I don't want I don't want to have awkward conversations. So I'm much happier to have someone else who I pay a reasonable sum to go in and make awkward conversations for me. Because, like you said, when they do something where you're like, "Hey, is this really what I'm worth?" Like, I don't want to hear that. Just tell me I'm. You know, okay, so I'm I hope, hey, I up. hope you cover this Lamar Jackson situation as such. Then you know what I mean. Like, I hope that he, you know, because this is a. That is really how this whole thing pans out. I don't know what the Ravens, I don't know how they're going to handle this because I think the natural instinct of the Ravens in NFL teams and CBAs and every negotiation is we got to win, we got to win, we got to win. We got the best lawyers of all time to win, win, win. And in this situation, that might not, I mean, I don't know how that's, that could blow up. Thank you for the conversation today. Rappaport, we appreciate you so much. Uh, you're the best, ladies and gentlemen, host of Rap Sheet and Friends, which might come back at some point, Ian Rappel. Yeah! You know, those contracts are very interesting, AJ. You know, you know how everybody says you should read through an entire contract before you sign it? Nobody actually does that, okay? <laughs> Nobody actually does that. You rely on somebody to do it for you. I read. I go through the whole fucking thing. It is a nightmare. What's that there? Yeah, it is a nightmare. <laughs> it is no fun. I don't know how it is. It is a nightmare. It is legit. And it's like, well, what is this? How can this? Happen? Why does that happen? Uh, can't if this ends, can't talk. I mean, it, I mean, there's one particular business that we yeah. I mean, there's just I mean, fascinating. That partic- <laughs> I mean, it's just I mean, I, it's just I did a. I, uh, you can say it. No, I literally can't. No. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. of as soon as <laughs> yeah. at some point we will. At some point we will. It'll run out. The person that it was that made the decision got run out of the company like literally the next day or like a month afterwards. So I think it would ten- it has a course at some point, but yeah, it was wild. But yeah, those contract negotiations. It's fucking wild. Because every little thing, they're like, oh, you're trying to fuck me right here. Huh? What is this? Mm-hmm. What? Are, hey, excuse me. What is this? Oh, that's oh, that's in every contract. We'll take that out, though. It's like, oh. oh. oh really? Fascinating. Okay. Oh, it's in every contract. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. This hey, how about this particular one? <laughs> yeah. I can't do this. This can't happen because, oh, we just, that's just uh, normal. That supposed to be. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's got that's that on a different. It's like, oh, oh. Huh. Huh. Okay. And I guess that's what your lawyer is supposed to do. I mean, I have faith. I have faith that the, the Ravens can get it done, and it'll both sides will feel fine about it. And the, you know, you'll get a big chunk of guaranteed money, and the the, lead, the team will somehow structure it to where they're not locked in if it doesn't turn out the way they want it to. Zito, what time's the hard out? Oh, three two. Oh, so we can take a break right now. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna take a break. Um, that'll be a hard fine out. balance. What's that, dude? The hard out's not fifty two though. If you don't take well, a if we do four. Yeah. Oh, you'd double up. Yeah. See, that'd be a big mm-hmm. radio move, but we'd lose everybody. We're back in four <laughs> minutes. This is the Pat McAfee show. You have got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question and pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was like watching you do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls guy, (laughs) fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I ever been a part of was, uh, you know, I, I, I had got the uh, uh, the restaurant which I'm in right now, and uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is funky ass smell. <laughs> <laughs> and I look, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> and I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and yeah. it's right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody then came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell a straight ass cheeks when they come in there like, I don't think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So, man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down. And, you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple, uh, you know, uh, dolphins that that usually walk back up in front. Hey, man, did you do this? Like, oh, no. So 
you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, hey, man, check it out. So you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know, what I mean, we get you a broom and a, uh, you know, you help, you help us, we help you. You feel me? And you know, we put together a little, uh, I put a proposition together for him, and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> It's a win-win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your Thank former you know, teammates. Man. Yeah, hey, everybody wins. You're helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them teammates. owned up to it. <laughs> Just the line of questioning. The line of questioning. His the name was Willie. Willie. Willie owned up to it. Matter of fact, he just he just left out. He's saying sweeping up. He's like, hey, what's up? Oh, boy, I've been looking for you. You okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we buzz down together up in the front of the uh, restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy, Willie, man. <laughs>
maybe let your wife feel some Jesus Christ as well. Give, you me, know your wife. I mean? Give me that thing. On the collection <laughs> plates, I don't know if that's what a pastor does. Is that do they pass collection oh, plates? Yeah. Well, I thought they were. Of course. Sex. Yeah. Baskets. No, I think that's uh, the Pope. The priest. The Pope's not, oh, the priest. Yeah. yeah. Well. Uh, Same thing. A man. pastor's a priest. Yeah. A pastor's like I think like a uh, like, like a Mennonite is an Amish. Yeah. Like, like a, a uh, it's like a uh, fake. Uh, yeah. Different no, denomination. No, so he, can, he can be married and have a family. Yeah. Like he's Red a Run. Can't do that. Oh, well, he's not. Supposed well, it's to just different. Family. I think it's different religions too. Isn't yeah. It? He's not. Mm -hmm. He's not Catholic. He's Christian, yeah. but yeah. he's you yeah. know. This guy's cutting sermons. He's yeah. cutting promos. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's he's he's, he's reading the Bible and dissecting it in his words to other people. He's leading other people to heaven. Hey, this is how you should live. Take some space away from your wife real quick. Leave the pool open. Turn the heater on. This is what the Lord wants. Follow me. Zo right? Zobra should be able to... Er he should be able to hit this guy in the head with a baseball bat Amen. as hard as he can, Hell repeatedly. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Knock some sense into him. Hell yeah. Literally. Knock some Lord into him. Knock, yeah. some Knock the devil out of him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the devil has gotten a hold of Pastor Yo. His dick has been gone in places it ain't supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But just as Jesus died on that Christ for us to sin, same with Pastor Yo. Amen. 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 Your dick ain't in there now, ain't that, Pastor? You're back on the right side of the Lord here, Pastor. That's the story he's selling, I bet, to a lot of people, getting them to heaven while he's doing terrible things behind the scenes. Shout out to hypocrisy out of Pastor Yon. And shout out to Ben, maybe getting his money back. We're back in uh, six minutes with more baseball talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the Pat McAfee Show. We have no idea how to do the subway system, but is doing the direction, the directing, the mapping, the planning. Well, my tower is in 10 minutes. That train should be ready. Huh? He knew his shit. He said it's going that way. This is Zito guided tour. We're not going to get spot on the train. I love Hawaii, man. Every time I go there, now granted, you make a Pro Bowl, you think you're going to Hawaii. Instead, <laughs> we went to the desert in Arizona. And then the next time I made a, a Pro Bowl, it was in Orlando. I was like, I'm out. I mean, come on. <laughs> Were you the first group that they stopped doing in Hawaii? Uh, yeah, I think it was like first or second group, of course. Of course. <laughs> Worked my entire life to get to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an honor. It, it wasn't though. I, no. I completely understand why guys don't go. 
It's like uh, Tom Brady sitting out for another Pro Bowl. He's like, yeah, he doesn't want to drive three hours into the desert right now. they go practice. <laughs> they go wherever he wants. Yeah, and then the games, they need to make it just a, a bunch of competitions. They need to make it a bunch of contests, mm -hmm. like the 40, everything like that, the bench. Bring back the bench for the offensive linemen. Get an eating contest in there. Mm -hmm. Get the kickers to do a kicking contest. Get the punters to do a punting contest. Have that quarterback challenge that I watched on NFL Network just a couple months ago. Have that happen again for the long ball. You get Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes in there. You get Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers throwing maybe on an accuracy mm -hmm. challenge. I like the little games that they set up for the quarterbacks. By the way, I would have went to the one in Orlando. I actually said I would go if they would have let me compete in the quarterback uh, little carnival thing they had. And they told me no. And I was like, well, I'm not going. Who makes that decision, the NFL? Yeah, I got an actual letter that said no. And I was like, well, I retire and I'm not coming. We regret to inform you that you are not allowed to participate in the I, quarterback. I think I would do well in that thing, by the way. I think I would do very well in it. Everything is like right in my range. Like the deep ball, I think, is like 40 yards. For me, that's a literal, that's my actual flick of the wrist. Like, you know how you watch those dude perfect videos? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it takes them, I don't know, who, who knows how many Thousands. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to judge them. A lot of other people do. <laughs> people say it takes them 4,000 attempts. But if you, if you throw the ball as far as you can and it lands, then you just put a trash can there. You're like, all right, I'm just going to throw this as hard as I can again. And then it's, like, science is basically making you yeah. hit that. Great way to do it. In that particular quarterback carnival that they do, everything is right in my like wheelhouse, like I was built for it. And I told Conte, the Colts PR guy, I had a dislocated kneecap at the time, I was supposed to get surgery. He was like, are you gonna play in the Pro Bowl? Cause I had like a $250,000 bonus on the Pro Bowl or not. I was like, I made the Pro Bowl, I should get my bonus. And he was like, well, technically in your contract, it says you have to play in the Pro Bowl. I'm like, am I allowed to do that quarterback challenge? They're like, no, I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Mercy still paid me, by the way. What a guy. As he should. Good dude. Yeah, as he should, by the way. No, yeah. no, I don't think he should. Because the contract technically said, like, people say billionaires stay billionaires because they're stingy with their money. He could have not paid me. He chose to pay me. Mm -hmm. Good guy. That's why I think the Detroit Lions just huh. hated Calvin Johnson. McAfee show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Oh, Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. Hour three on this beautiful Tuesday, June 22nd. Here we are. Uh, the P hashtag PMS 100K giveaway week. Day two is the entire hashtag contest is a beautiful one we're giving away two 70 inch televisions Ooh, we're giving away twenty five thousand dollars this follows after giving away twenty five thousand dollars yesterday and a golf cart yesterday Damn. now two 70 inch tvs and twenty five thousand dollars up for grabs all you have to do is all you have to there we go <laughs> Don't want to kill it. Yeah, but you got, I mean, you heard me just like, <laughs> you knew that I was literally I, just buying time there because I forgot what the contest was because, <laughs> I mean, it's a good one today. I can, yeah. I was wondering why I haven't been able to move my arms. Okay, right before this photo was taken, all right, this one right here, uh, I did curls, 30 pound dumbbells, they're mm -hmm. little machine ones, alternating. And by the way, we're talking one, two, three, four. Five, Five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine, nine ten. ten. That is how we're counting, okay? How many curls do you think I did in one run, by the way, 
Wow. Right before I took this photo, if you get it right, you could potentially win $25,000 or one of two 70 inch TVs that we'll be giving away. All you have to do is get it in before somebody else. Okay. Uh, first person to get the right answer in, 25 grand. Then the next two, obviously the televisions. Congrats to whoever it is. I appreciate you. AJ, what's your guess, pal? Uh, 14, seven each arm. Okay. Okay. I'm going. Uh, I'm judging off of like percentage of your max. I would imagine if you're 30 pounds, your max is probably what 45 pounders you could do in a curl. Oh, this guy. Jeez. I mean, what is your de look at the what photo? An oh. Don't just don't just judge. It was a compliment. I'm saying you were so jacked that you only had to do seven each arm to look like that. Oh, oh, oh good spin. Oh, what a what a yeah. flip there. Never would have <laughs> Aaron Donald. You're like a young Aaron Donald. Never would have expected that. You know, and, and we talked to Bobby Lashley one time, and Bobby Lashley is maybe the most jacked human on the planet yes. earth right now i asked him i'm like what do you do and he said oh at this point i just got to do just a little bit of weight i just kind of work out everything and just kind of maintain and just move along that's what you're saying about me me and bobby lashley don't have to lift that much to look like we have a little bit of muscle is that what you're saying aj hawk well, i think bobby lashley may have some superior genetics over you and myself for sure that guy is absolutely shredded he's jack he is uh him and drew mcintyre oh, okay we're staring at each other I walked by him, you know, while they were staring. I was like, Jesus, <laughs> look, these dudes are billboards. Yeah. They're, they're, their backs are billboards. I have no idea how they do it. Uh, but you're not right with 14. So go ahead and enter your guess on Twitter. Use the hashtag PMS uh, 100K giveaway week day two. And that's the number two Ooh. at the end. And guess how many reps alternating each one counts. Good luck out there. Um, I haven't been able to completely straighten my arms all day because mm -hmm. of it. There's a little bit of a cramp. So that could be, you know, that could be a little bit of a clue. Like yeah, maybe I cool. did. Maybe I did go, AJ. Maybe I did go. Very impressed with myself, by the way. Very pumped up about it. Why? With the, how many times you could curl thirty pounds? Yes, I don't know. You know, I haven't boxed. Okay, so it's a lot then. So people know it's a good clue for us. Bingo! That's what. And I haven't boxed in a couple of days either. Oh. Fresh oh. arms. So the arm now yeah. they're dead now. By the way, my <laughs> arms are dead right now. But I want it. I got after. It. I was pretty psyched up about it. And if I could just look, how do you just look like that all the time? There's yeah. some guys that just look like that all the time. Why? Just flex. Just flex all the time. Yeah, but how, there's people I feel like that don't have to do that. They just kind of walk around and they look like <laughs> that's, cut they, up. They got zero body fat, huh? Yeah. That's what it they is. They don't eat. Everyone else could stop because I already tweeted out the winning answer. Diggs did count. Mm -hmm. He did. <laughs> he did. Uh -huh. So as, we, as I did it live, there was six different counters. Nobody agreed on the number. <laughs> so we had to watch the video back. And by the way, then it became... Two people wow. agreed, three people agreed after watching the video back. It was, it was, there was, there was quite a speculation on what the right answer was. Well, it was tough to keep count because as my guess, I'm pretty sure it was correct, 13,873. See, Ooh. now that is <laughs> right something there. to think about here mm -hmm. because I was getting going, I was moving, whatever, you could potentially win, get the right answer. Um, we're supposed to have Jet passing on with us, but there is a tech glitch. Oh, no. So uh, no. Jet has delayed. been filling here, Too high. you know, just kind of filling. I think you guys have witnessed and heard us filling there, which is yeah. terrible fodder for conversation. Hopefully getting to a convo that is very fascinating. Hopefully Jet isn't on the other line Zooming with a Zobrist marriage counselor. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Hopefully that guy was is. their marriage counselor as well. How terrible is that? Well, and that's when he told him to take some space away. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, just worst guy of all time. But the Zobris pastor yawn uh, situation where the pastor was trying to fornicate and did successfully knock boots with Ben Zobris' wife while telling Ben uh, to basically go, hey, just go away a little bit. Go, go live in a, a hotel. Hey, go do what you got to do here. And having him take off a year basically afterwards and losing out on money is just one of many wild tales in situations that follow around the great sport of baseball. It seems like everything that happens off the diamond is magical on the diamond snoozer. Mm -hmm. That changed last night when both of those worlds combined with Jacob deGrom welcoming in an entirely new era of baseball to break it all down. Insider from ESPN, uh, MLB insider, ladies and gentlemen, Jet Pass. Yeah. boy, Jet. Oh, that's oh, are you talking? Yes. Jet, Breaking what's going on? Get it, dude. Oh, wait, are you talking? I'm sorry. Me? I, I, 
Yeah. No, I, I, I just thought on the show when people talk, you don't pay attention. I'm oh, sorry. My bad. Touche. Oh, okay. Because of the... Touche. Yeah. Two, two. Yeah. I respect it. I respect it. I almost it. forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget about that. <laughs> sorry about that, Jet. But hey, I, I think I would have struck him out. I really do. Oh, we could have figured it out right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What the hell? The player just stepped Still off the it. mound. Thought we were going to be able to finish that thing off. We could have returned the favor to you there. I, I do apologize <laughs> for that situation. It snowballed into something that we could have never guessed. Uh, I apologize for that. But thank you for being a part of one of my favorite moments I've ever had in my entire life, live on the air. Ben Zobrist, his wife and pastor, that snowballed into something I don't think any of them could have ever guessed. And, and I don't want to talk about that with you because you have information on stuff that we can't find anywhere else. We'll be able to talk about what happened with that pastor and that World Series MVP at another time with other experts, maybe pastors and other things like that. This whole spider tack situation here, what happens if yesterday... When the camera national uh, solo shot is on the best pitcher in baseball, DeGrom, all eyes are on DeGrom. What happens if when they go in his belt or under his, on, under his hat or behind his neck, what happens if they just scoop up a massive thing? Like, what happens if that happens? And is this going to go on every single game? And how many people will get caught? And how did we get here? So a lot of questions there. I appreciate you. All right, first off, uh, I think he goes to jail if they find something. <laughs> Dead? No. Like, oh, I was about to say solitary confinement. I mean, I got shackled yeah, for being exactly. drunk in public. I, <laughs> I couldn't even imagine that type of punishment. He's going to be your roommate, Pat. Hey, um, they, uh, you know, it, it, listen, no roommate. it's bound to happen at some point because cheating's been – cheating. like, cheating's kind of baseball's thing. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, but – you know, the trash cans and now the spider tech. Um, it, it was interesting. I was talking with somebody last night who uh, uh, was aware of the enforcement that was going on across baseball and about how many guys had been using before they enforced the rule that had been on the books this whole time. And he said some of our worst offenders in baseball pitched last night and they didn't find anything. So there's one of two possibilities going uh, on here. Oh, keistering. They're keistering. Number, number one is that guys actually have been scared straight, and okay. and I think that's I think that's probably the likeliest. But number two is guys are finding interesting spots to yeah. put their spider tack now, and you know some guys got spider tack on his balls, and he's going to regret it later. Yeah, but it is it is going to happen at yeah. some point this year. Hey, Skin, listen, we got $500 million on the line. <laughs> All right, and we'll get back to you later. Go ahead, AJ. Hey, Jet, so how often will they be coming out and patting these pitchers down, and can a, the opposing manager, like, ask for this, and are they gonna, is this going to be some gamesmanship where they're going to continue to try to mess with guys? Interesting. Looking through the rules, it says if we determine that a manager is requesting something illegally, we're not going to go check it. Like, if he's doing it just to – you know, delay the game or if a guy's, you know, struck out eight in a row and he says, okay, go check that. They're not going to do it unless there's evidence there, but this is going to be something you see every day with every pitcher. Starting pitchers are going to be checked multiple times a game. It's probably going to be after the first inning uh, and after subsequent innings there. And uh, every time a reliever comes into the game at the end of his outing uh, or at the end of his first inning, rather, he's going to be checked. But the closer are the ones that get the special treatment because like let's say you give up a walk-off home run you don't want an umpire going all tsa on you and patting you down and and trying to have himself a good time so closers get checked before they go into the game okay so they're gonna have to get somebody to air mail it in from the crowd uh, mm-hmm. while they're doing their long extended run maybe i've seen a lot of jail escape docs and how they get stuff in docs I assume if pitchers really want a couple hundred million, they'll figure it out. But that ump last night, I mean, he did a... Oh, yeah. He went he went full, like, two hands into the crotchal area. Yeah. Like, it was intense. And that's and DeGrom. You can, see, you can see the look on DeGrom's face. DeGrom was like, I know I'm good, but geez. Yeah, he's really good, obviously. <laughs> hands off the merchandise. Amen. Uh, go ahead, Ty. Yeah, Jet, for guys like DeGrom, like, after last night, and he's good, does he get, like, a check mark, or is this... Like you said, is this going to be every single time he pitches multiple times? 
Oh yeah, it, it's going to be happening for the rest of Come the year. Come on, Jet. It's- why does the sport have to stink? Why? Why does it have to stink to watch? The game's already too long. Don't we already think that? Isn't that kind yeah, of like? But is it, yeah, but isn't this isn't this just going to be in between innings? Like I, I don't know. Why aren't they doing this- it? Why aren't they doing it in the dugout too? Why is it out there on like first base line? Why don't they have somebody like following? For instance, when I was in the substance of abuse program after the aforementioned uh, public uh, intoxication that happened, you know, I just some a drug tester would call me in random cities i've been tested everywhere that you could imagine follow me into like lobby bathroom of hotel gas station bathroom of place couldn't that just happen in the dugout it seemed like this was a show like it was it seemed like like the grom was out there and it was like all right if they find something this guy is going to get booed out of the building like it's uh isn't there another way you think to do it or is this how i they- was you know i was actually I, i'm glad you brought up drug tests because i was actually wondering whether you guys have had Gumpy tested for being high, for being the spectacular dumbass who actually says bet on England's soccer team. Gumpy, what are you doing? Oh, my God. We're already through to the knockout stage and won the first game. Oh! Jet, you don't know, Gumpy said. That's what he said. That's what he said. You don't know, Jet. I think he just said knockout. Yeah, well, he's from Canada, pulling for England. I know, I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, but the, um, by the way, the grandpa, Ugh. grandpa was what, quite a bear. I mean, yeah. the slam shirt today too. I mean, yeah, because he dunked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I saw it early, and then he obviously. I mean, Jet, great appearance here today. I want to let you know, great, great appearance here today, but. Is it going to be broadcast to everybody, these checks? Is this going to be uh, – or is this going to be uh, something they're going to try to expedite quickly? Yeah, yeah it's, I was going to say it was just a novel thing because it was the first day. Like if you go to the ballpark, you're going to see it every time. But I, I mean here – like this is a, a genuine question for both of you because you guys play professional sports and, and you probably have takes on cheating. Um, would you rather – Major League Baseball implement this in the middle of the season like it did. After six years of not suspending anybody for foreign substances, or would you rather have them wait until the end of the year, even though they know that this is going on? Go ahead, AJ. Yeah, it depends if I'm a pitcher or not. If I'm a pitcher, no. I want them to wait till the end of the year. If I'm a hitter, right. test them right now. Hey, get this and shit out of here. Yeah, get it out of here, Doug. Kick it off the tour right now. If I'm a designated hitter and I'm making all my money – off of hitting a baseball in the person that I'm competing against. Although I know that could affect my team as well, but our team's yeah. performance doesn't affect my paycheck as much as my performance does. If I can make this guy stink and hit ball bombs off him, let's do that right now. But for the sake of the sport, though, doesn't there have to be kind of like uh, if we didn't abuse this, if we didn't get the spider attack, like isn't that almost what Manfred, who I know called the trophy a piece of metal and has said other things, is that kind of like, hey, we have to do this until we can learn that we can't just abuse everything that we do? And do you think this will ever make its way back into the game because it's been around for so long? Or do you think this is like the new normal? Like, hey, these baseballs are going to be completely dry uh, when you're pitching because that's like a whole heads up football type thing, isn't it? If it sounds like the culture of baseball is to always use that stuff. Here's what's going to happen. Major League Baseball at some point in the next year, and I would assume it's going to be before the 2022 season, is going to have a substance that it approves pitchers to use. What they're trying to do right now is figure out whether they can have something that's sticky without significantly increasing the spin rate, which is what the whole problem was in the first place. You know, this all really started when pitchers started, or when hitters rather, started complaining to Major League Baseball, hey, this is a problem and you have to take care of it because nobody can get hits anymore. Uh, that's where this came from because for years, Major League Baseball understood that this was going on and just let it go. Didn't enforce the rule because uh, players were saying at the time, pitchers especially, we need this to keep control of the ball. Well, when you give a Major League player like a little bit, 
he's going to eat the whole damn cake. Hundred million, hundreds of millions of dollars are on the line. I mean, that, of course, that's what yeah, guaranteed money forever. That is so much money whenever. And, and I think that's that all get goes all the way back to like a rod, right? Whenever he was 18 yeah. years old, yeah. he was supposed to be like the next thing. And he was in a locker room with a bunch of grown men who were mostly taking and using stuff. And uh, listen, a rod, Alex Rodriguez is Alex Rodriguez. OK, yeah. like I am not I don't know enough about him. But when I learned about him basically being one of the faces of cheating and then he came out and kind of owned it and said, like, this is the way it was. And it didn't sound like a lot of people disagreed with him, by the way. At the, at the time, it didn't sound like it. it. There's always in that sport, all those unwritten rules are going to all get exposed because of how much money is at stake. Is there anything else we should look out for? I mean, I, I would have never guessed people were in sensors on their chest that people could ring in and tell them a curveball is coming, but that was happening, I guess, right? No, you told No, don't no, do yeah. this! Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, yeah, you're right. You told us before that didn't happen. Yeah, you're right, you're right. But no, And here's the thing. Every time somebody accuses a Houston Astros player of doing that, Astros fans say... Pesson went on McAfee and said it didn't happen. I didn't say it didn't happen. What I said is I haven't found any evidence of it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, See, oh, I knew oh, it. Oh, I knew oh, it. Oh. Breaking. So I just want to let you know, I brought this back up because I see all those tweets as well. And remember, whenever you said that to me, I was very surprised as well because it was my understanding that they had something that went all the way from their toes to their heart and somebody was sitting in a dugout and they had eyes on a camera that was in center field and they were hitting like, oh, curveball's coming just a little. And they, oh, all right, here we go. All right. All right. And then a fastball's right coming. Right their nipples, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. That, by the way, wouldn't take a shirt off. Hey, That's right. Wouldn't take a shirt off. Ah. So then whenever you said, after all my research, and I view you as the authority on baseball in my life, and I hope you know that. So that's you and Ty are literally the, he's more like the opinion, how I should feel, who does what. You're like, hey, this is what's happening in the sport. So you two are about 90 to 95% of my information. So whenever you said, no, there was no exoskeleton, my thing, I was like, oh, shit. Like, that was surprising to me. And it is surprising. That's why I think he gets tweeted so much again. And now oh, here yeah. you are saying i'm not no 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 i'm not saying that it existed i'm just saying i went looking for it i spent a long okay. time looking for it and didn't find it you couldn't find anybody to say yes you couldn't find any like pictures or potential you couldn't find anything in your investigation i trust me pat i spent a lot of time looking for that stupid ass buzzer <laughs> and couldn't find it. They buried it. Couldn't Just find it. Couldn't buzzer. find it. Diggs, go ahead. Uh, Jet, Otani's doing the home run derby. Tatis, uh, yes. we're still waiting to hear about Tatis. Vlad Jr.'s not doing it. Oh. Uh, is there ah. any, are they? Are the players incentivized to do this at all? Or is it just a publicity thing? And can we incentivize these young players, especially that we want to see do it? I think the incentive should be that Otani's in it. Like, it, Here's the thing. I think this derby is going to be the most watched. I'm not just saying this, I'm not being company guy because it's on ESPN. This is this is the most excited. I've been covering baseball almost 20 years now. This is the most excited I've been for a home run derby. Hey, just getting to going. see Otani, getting to see him in Colorado. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Well, are, a, are you playing? No, having it bad again? No, when you're talking about how awesome the Home Run Derby is, I'm very excited about that because weeks ago we decided kind of like we floated out we're going to go. And as we got closer, I just assumed I would be like, no, we're not, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. We can't you're do it. You're going? It's on a Monday. We've kind of put in the motion with SeatGeek that we are potentially going to be. At, get the hell there, Pat McAfee. It's Monday night, though, right? It's a Monday night. Aren't you on SmackDown, not Raw? Yeah, but I'm just saying that if that's Monday night and then all of a sudden I'm home 2, 3 a.m., that rolls into a terrible Tuesday for me. I mean, it's just, you know, I, mean, I got to think like an adult here. I got to speak into a microphone, I don't know, like 20 hours live a week. So I <laughs> don't know if you I... You turn into a little bitch. Oh! oh wow. <laughs> It's the first week that you're back on the road too. Yeah, WWE. I'm in Houston on Friday, Fort Worth on hey, Sunday. On. I mean, what are you fucking think? So I'm not Brett oh. Michaels, dude. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right, I'll go. I'll go, Jet. Right, two, two, I'll go. Two, two, I'll go. Two, two. Yeah, I will go, Jet. I'm going to go. Listen, I like their laws. The ball is going to fly. You know, I, I'm. Hey, I'm, hold on. Pat, ask Jet. Does it, does it really mess up guys' swing for the rest of the season if they compete in the home run derby? No. Total myth. No evidence to back that up. Thought so. Felt yeah. good about that. Not going to happen. Otani's going to be hitting balls 500 feet. I, I will say this. I don't know if Major League Baseball outside. still does oh. this. 
But once upon a time, the balls that they use in the home run derby must be like the rejects from the Rawlings factory because they oh, feel a little different. They're almost like the Super Bowls that are out there. So uh, it's going to be awesome. This is I the am, ball that I, I hit. Very excited. This is the ball that I got on base after hitting a 90-some mile an hour fastball one of the first nights I ever stepped in there. Oh, yeah. I wish they would have gave me one of them home run derby juice balls, or yeah. maybe maybe I would have used a cork bat like I'm Sammy Sosa or, or something like that. But I, I played old school baseball, and uh, I'm excited to potentially get out to Denver and watch those guys. I, hit yeah, we, I bet you we could get you on the field. No, 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 no. I'm out in the crowd. We're you actually, want to resurrect your career? Yeah, playing the softball game, Pat. Your AB against AJ last time. Come on. You're ready. I want to see you hit you a tank in Otani. Colorado. Who should I what? You should pitch to Otani. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's what I should do. By the way, so much pressure yes. on that. Uh -huh. The pitchers. Oh, the yeah. pitchers. Big time. Poor Bryce Harper's dad. I understand he was a great coach and everything like that. But when he stepped <laughs> into the box and like, hey, dad, like, hey, we need to really go here. Like, we need to really go. The dad has to feel or whoever's throwing, like, there is a very large sense of pressure on that i don't think we give enough credit for that that is a tough gig not a fun gig i won't see any of that though because i think we're going to be in the hey we're going to be in the stands we'll be looking down on you judging you yeah. hopefully snagging balls you know what i mean all right i like it how many home runs are going to win it you think i mean uh, a lot oh, i, I don't even 50. know what yeah i was gonna say i don't even know what the number is going to be I feel like Otani's going to do like a Josh Hamilton in Yankee Stadium thing where just every ball that's piped in there is going to be going out. Now, let's final question for that, because you said the incentive is that Otani's in it, so other players should want to play in it. They, they also get paid. Okay, like, yeah, I, yeah, think, yeah. I, I think I think there's a million bucks on the line for the winner. Oh, that's right, exactly. here we go. OK, yeah. let's go. Showtime. Let's go. Yeah. Shohei Otani winning another million jet passing covering on TV. Us probably. Uh, very, 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 very high in the outfield. <laughs> Can't wait for that, ladies and gentlemen. Jet pass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good performance by Jet. He did call me. It does hit different coming from like a Jet passing. Yeah. Call me a little bitch, you know what I mean? <laughs> it does hit a little different. I what do you mean? Different from what if who said it to you? Who else? Just anybody. You know, like that. You know what I'm talking about. Hey, listen. You know what I'm talking about. All right? What do you want to say, hey, hey, listen, pal, we're not that close. Is that what you wanted to say? No, no, I'm just saying, no, I actually appreciate it. I like whenever people do that. Just yeah. from a suit, you know, with the thing uh -huh. on the TV thing, hearing that from him, it was like, a, oh, man, you're right. Tim McAfee didn't, hey, he did not raise me for this moment. <laughs> you know, after this is some... Some journalism guy burying me, calling yeah. me, you know, like that. That is what I was like. Oh, that's tough. Yeah. Jets are savage, though. There ain't nothing I can do about it. Sometimes you just got to eat stuff like that. Yeah. I, but goddamn, that'd be Monday, Friday, mm -hmm. I forgot Sunday. That was the first week that you're like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what day? What uh, July what? July 16th, Houston. Let's go. Smackdown. Live. I think tickets are sold out at this point. That place is going to be popping the fuck off and then sunday in fort worth is money in the bank here we go mm -hmm. and then we're on the road to SummerSlam party of the summer i mean it's about to be an electric time lot got to figure it out still mm -hmm. but let's assume we are we're taking good steps and this is by the way public you see what's going on here publicly thanking mm -hmm. the people we're talking to on the other side in this whole thing this is going well we're going to get there it is a potential conversation that is happening with big words being used uh stuff that Rappaport and i talked about but it's going to be electrifying i don't know if i have time to smoke all the dope in denver yeah. in the outfield on monday night that thing ends at like midnight that thing is a late one oh, yeah. and then if we're flying back out of denver back to indianapolis that might be that might be a bit troublesome well, and not to mention the friday before you're also in tampa it's not even yeah, that, yeah, it's not okay, as if yeah. it starts on yeah, monday yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like this whole yeah and i'm old now you know what i mean i'm 34 now I got to get out there, though. I love Denver. I mean, that would be... Yeah. Well, maybe Denver for the week. Go to Tampa to yeah, Denver. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think we go to Tampa to Denver, get a house up there in the mountains. Oh, yeah. In the, in the mountains. <laughs> and then we go then we go from we go from there to Houston. To Houston. So oh, then yeah. it isn't like a, 
All right, cool. I think I think that's what we do. The wife will love it too. She wants to go to Denver for sure. Denver's sweet. And I really do think this derby, like most years, it's like all right, whatever, unless it's at like Fenway or something where guys are like hitting it, you know, out of the stadium onto like the street back there. But Otani in, you know, mile high. I feel like especially in the zone he's in right now. Exactly. I, I mean, Field like, is beautiful. He legit too. might hit fifty homers. Is I've Berman, always, is uh, Berman on the call? Bop, 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 yeah, bop. always. He's awesome. I don't know if he still does it, but I think they, they am on ESPN Plus with. Uh, I mean, you guys all confirm yes, he's on it, but then yeah, you don't know. Even Booger, no, 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 no. All of our memories of home run derbies are always exactly. yeah. Boomer on the call, dude. All right? How about this one? I was asking about this one coming up. Well, I mean, it's a surprise, mystery yeah. guest. Maybe Tim Kirchin. But you know what? I was while you're speaking of Boomer, good call. <laughs> you talking about this one being a big one? Yeah. Would be nice maybe to get Boomer on the call, you know, and listen yeah, to that. And watch it incredible. at home. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. think about how good it is watching yeah. at home. It's going to be awesome. It's so yeah, nice on true. TV. You don't want to have to sit there and wait during all the breaks and stuff when you're there in person. Yeah, but catching an oh, Otani oh, yeah. home run oh, derby ball. Like a full, yeah, right yeah, in the face. Yeah. Or it hits you and breaks your nose because you're so stoned you can't even think. <laughs> or, you, or you catch Excuse it. Excuse me, I just want to let you know that ball's moving in slow motion off yeah. of Shohei's bat all the way to me if I have a good read on what it's going to be like in Denver for me as soon as I step in there. I think I think that thing's going to be zooming in on me a little bit a couple of times. It's going to be like a, a tiger vision whenever you're hitting a putt or yeah. a shot. He might even but, like call his shot just straight into your glove. You know, just point at your glove and just go. By the way, we did order a uh, massive, a massive <laughs> a mitt, a mega mitt, a <laughs> massive <laughs> mitt. Yeah. Will, My, will they let it in? Well, I think so. So I looked into the rules. Back in the day, whenever we would just go, uh, was it the gold lot, blue lot, gold, gold lot in Pittsburgh, blue lot in West Virginia, is and say so we go to the gold lot for these Pirates games, and it was despicable what oh, was yeah. going on out there. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're Wild talking, West. it was it's insane. It was a party. It was a festival because the Pirates stink. So we're there for the fireworks and we're there for the, the gold lot, basically, that's happening. It was like a real thing that was happening one whole summer, basically. It was like became something we did. I was taking in a fishing net. I was taking in a full Ooh. fishing net at that point in my life. We practiced with uh, the first fish. I had to have many, by the way, because they did get lost and sure. forgotten and left behind or whatever. Uh, but we practiced the first time with a full can Natty Light. And I stood on the other side of the parking lot. And it was hucked, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I went right through the net, obviously. It exploded oh. everywhere. <laughs> it was a full scene. So we had to tie that net up. But I've caught four baseballs. Only one off of a bat with a fishing net. Every other one is me accosting the uh, third baseline uh, mm -hmm. uh, person that third does the foul balls. Oh, okay. oh yeah, that, yeah. That person that's down there, because they always give it to a kid. But in Pittsburgh, there's really nobody at the game. So if you're there and you're loud, they're going to hear you and see you. I'd go in there, what, six, six inning probably we, we'd go in there. I got a, I got a baseball from one of those guys uh, – uh, when Barry Bonds was in town, hitting dongs Ooh, or whatever. Really? Yeah, and I walked out and told people that that was the ball, obviously. <laughs> Something happened, and uh, you can't just walk into in, in the baseball stadiums with fishing nets anymore. Full metal ones. Really? I mean, I don't know how the fuck they let me in with it. I'm going to be honest. It was just, it was like this big. I mean, obviously, it didn't, wasn't shaped like a gun. <laughs> but it was a big thing, and I was just like waving that thing around. I snagged the foul ball. The only one I ever caught off a bat was a foul ball up in a head. A couple rows. Yeah. It was fantastic. It was, by like a big band. pop. Oh, I yeah. Bet. Big pop. It was on the uh, it was jumbo on, truck. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Big. It was a big moment. It was awesome. But with this one, can't take the fishing net, so we're getting one of them baseball gloves that are just a fucking joke, and I'm going in there with that. So you block, like you block the three rows behind you because you're holding on that giant glove the whole time? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's home run derby. Everybody's eyes are up anyway. Yeah, right. Come on. We, everybody's eyes are up in the sky anyways. You know what I mean? But. I don't know if that mitt's gonna make it this year. Hey, hey. Mm. <laughs> that is. I think we all know. We all know the answer. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, Denver's a great city. Denver is a great city. We should go. Love Denver. I guess we're trying to number one, by the way. Thank you all so much. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Uh, honestly, we don't do it to Trent. 
I'd like to let everybody know that. We do it because it's very easy to keep track of answers whenever you do this. It's actually a neat feature that Twitter has that every other platform is tough to figure out how they win and who wins the contest. So we appreciate you going to Twitter using hashtag PMS100K giveaway weekday two in trying to guess how many curls I did alternating in a photo that we posted earlier. Enter as many times as you would like. We're giving away another 25,000 in two 70 inch TVs. Tomorrow, we'll give away another $25,000 in some more cool things that we got to figure out tonight. Let's go. Mm -hmm. uh, but we love everybody and appreciate everybody's time that they've spent listening or watching alongside of us. And before we go on a break next week for the first time in a long time, we figured we'd say thank you by giving away a bunch of shit. CFO Phil loves it. Absolutely love no, it. Loves it. Do more, he says. Do <laughs> yeah. more. It's awesome. We thank you so much. We're back in four minutes. We'll answer some phone calls while we wrap up this beautiful Hour 3 Tuesday, June 22nd, 2001, Pat McAfee Show. Well, hello, sensual piano keys. You sound incredibly inspirational and motivational. Big announcement coming from our company. You know, throughout my entire life, I've made decisions that people have said, ooh, that is stupid. You've read about them, you heard about them. When I was in high school, I went to an underground poker game, won 1,400 bucks, flew myself down to Miami, won a kicking contest, and got a scholarship to West Virginia the next day. I turned my back on soccer that day. Everybody said, you're an idiot. Why are you doing that? You have more schools looking at you for soccer than you do for football. What are you thinking? Fast forward eight years with the Indianapolis Colts, and I was on top of the world, top of the mountain. How's the view? Not too shabby. And when I was at the top of my game, I decided, you know what? I'm going to pursue some other stuff. My friends and I are going to go to work on the internet. We're going to try to chase fulfillment as opposed to just a paycheck. And there were some interesting responses from people of power in the sporting world. Make, Make them the tear can. the uniform Absolutely. off of yes, you. Sure. Look, somebody needs to stage an intervention. People who know this guy, get to him now. Make him put his helmet back on and get to camp. Oh, no, there's no intervention, Wilbon. No, no, no. Here we are three years after that date, and it's a celebration, bitches. Cut the music. Let's hand out some bags to the boys. For the boys. For the boys. By the way, that's you, brother. Oh my god. Are you home? Alright, come out the front door. What's up, dude? <laughs> what is this? What's this? Oh, uh, you son of a bitch. What the fuck? Fuck you. Oh, oh yeah. that is the bag of money. Uh, Fandor deal went through. That's fifty thousand dollars. Here's a backpack with uh, fifty thousand dollars in it. Oh, fifty thousand. Oh my god. Yes, yeah, so there's fifty thousand dollars in there. Yes, yeah, so there's fifty thousand dollars. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Let's go. Did you brought it back. <laughs> oh man. Let's, Let's, Let's go, dude. Start. Let's go. I appreciate you, buddy. Yo, this is... Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, dude. We did it? Couldn't have done it without you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> dude, it's a fuck ton of money. <laughs> you guys, <hey? laughs> When I asked Dan Patrick for some advice, he told me always take care of the boys. Well, and you should know, those people that are there with you, that their value cannot be overstated and should not be overstated. So Mike Wilbon, they didn't hold my jersey on me. They didn't hold my helmet on me. We didn't have an intervention. What we have is a celebration because when you bet on yourself, sometimes you hit for big. And for us, the only place we'll bet for the next couple years in an exclusive deal, FanDuel backed the Brinks truck up to our office and we have never been more thankful, more excited, and more together as we promote the greatest sports book on planet Earth.
Every day is game day for these guys. It's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back. Welcome back. SeatGeek is back. We were just talking about the Home Run Derby, talking to SeatGeek, figuring out how we can get the best possible price on tickets, not only to give away like we did a couple weeks ago, but also maybe go sit in the outfield and watch Shohei Otani put on a show, maybe catch some balls and some marijuana. Hell yeah. Catching balls and bongs, Denver, Colorado, MLB All-Star Weekend. See you there. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe, we'll see. Maybe. Right. But if you're looking to get a ticket to go there, the best ticket that you can find to go to the Home Run Derby or to go to a football game this fall or to go to a concert or a play or anything that has tickets, the best ticket available is always found at SeatGeek because SeatGeek actually scans every other ticket on the internet. They score every single ticket that they have on their platform compared to what is around the internet elsewhere. Green means good, red means bad. If you get your tickets anywhere else, you're probably getting a little screwed over with some carrier fees and transfer fees. Hmm. And what you buy probably isn't what you're gonna get. You might get catfish. Can't happen with SeatGeek because their algorithm, their tech, their everything is the best in the business. Right now, use code McAfee. You get $20 off your first order. That's code M-C-A-F-E-E for $20 off. If you're watching on YouTube, the link is in the bio. If not, download the SeatGeek app from the App Store or go to SeatGeek. Yep, I'm not going to read the whole link thing out, but use code McAfee for $20 off your first order. SeatGeek's legit, by the way. The best. Yes. I've gotten tickets to, uh, you know, a football game. Mm-hmm. Uh Hockey game. What? what? I've gone to an NBA game through SeatGeek. What? I have a uh, Final Four game what? through SeatGeek. I, uh, and uh, Hamilton. What? what? Hell yeah. So I don't know. Is that good? I don't know if you guys ever seen that. I, I saw it. That I saw it. I didn't I see saw it live. It. I saw it live. Saw it. Me. On Broadway. Yeah, I was in the room. Really? Where they talked about the room where it happened. I was in the room wow. where they talked about the room where it happened. I think I was on the third cast. Okay. Okay. Ah. I was on the third cast. Uh, that one particular dude who played uh, the guy who killed Jesus, Pontius Pilate. Uh, uh, John John Legend was Jesus. Obviously, uh, he is uh, Lord and Savior in the. Uh, oh, Joseph in a Technicolor Dreamcoat. No, the guy that killed. Uh, anyway, he was on there. Yes. I'm called Judas. Anyway, SeatGeek has tickets for everything. Is what I'm saying. Okay. James Gordon, let's go. Uh, maybe Judas. Judas was the bad guy. Yeah, right he there. was. So he was Judas, the guy that I seen in Hamilton. He, by the way, he was. Aaron Burr, sir, the uh, man who so he was a Judas. Man. killed Alexander Hamilton. Ultimately. And was it good? I mean, I mean, everything I potentially watch, and it could be if I'm forced and sitting down and watching paint dry somehow, I will figure out how to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I, I will figure out what I yeah. should be watching. How to? I love live shows just because. Like plays, for instance. I it's usually no- not good when you have this long like preamble before you just say yes or no. It was good or bad. I'm just saying, I enjoy almost everything. Like, okay. if, if it's live and I'm there, I mean, I'm going to enjoy it. Even if it's a terrible show, which my wife and I have seen a couple terrible shows whenever we go to these shows. But we enjoy, you know, potentially hitting some vitamins, traveling to Denver, and just sitting and watching and be like, what the fuck just happened? Right mm-hmm. Yeah, people being able to do that's wild, too. Like remembering all those lines. Running, running around, sprinting. Singing, it's, yeah. it's, unbe- yeah. it's an unbelievable talent, I think, that a lot of people display. But I'm super cultured. Everybody knows that. Everybody gets it. Let's get some phone calls, shall we? Let's go to Josh in New York. What's going on, Josh? You ever see Hamilton? Uh, Broadway, off Broadway, maybe. <laughs> Jay Sud, Dead Poet Society. Ever been there? Shout out. Oh, yeah. I love Hamilton, brother. I listened to that on repeat like when it first came out. It was beautiful. Hey, by the way, it is a banger. My wife listens to it. I couldn't do it because I watched the show. It's, what are we doing? But my mm-hmm. wife loved it. I happened yeah, to hear you did as well. What do you want to talk about, brother? So, well, shout out to Mitty for fielding uh, phone calls from Stooges like me. All day. Hi, boy, Mitty. Hey, Mitty. Mitty. My name is Mitty. Uh, take on, Hamil- or on uh, Hernandez there is wild. Kelsey is clearly the goat at tight end. Uh, yeah, that was I uh, Zito. About that. We attacked Zito right. strictly because he could have said Ditka and he chose not to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just Great. coach of all time. Yeah. Just yep. get his Aaron Hernandez uh, plug in. But I wanted to ask Deadly. you, if, if SmackDown gave you a la carte yeah. to book any match using the current roster, what would you do? 
Okay, uh, Josh, I appreciate that. Oh, this is called um, fantasy booking. It's what happens in the wrestling world where you visualize and pray uh, and put together what you would do for a story and angle, which ultimately leads to a pay-per-view payoff or beginning of something else. For me, if I was to fantasy book anything, I'd put uh, Roman Reigns on the microphone with Paul Heyman for two hours, and I would have Roman Reigns just beat everybody on the roster Ooh. and then have Paul Heyman cut a promo in between each one, and then I would say, that's why this guy's the best wrestler on earth. That's what I would say. That's what my fantasy is. But also, I'd like him to lose an SB to me. Hell yeah. Which they got me fucked, AJ, by the way. Wait, so you're up for an SB? Against Roman, who's the greatest. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of put me in a pickle here. Wait, what's, the, what's the category? <laughs> uh, it's just WWE moment of the year. Roman returns, uh, arrive, dominate. I forget what his shirt was. And then he just, he, he turned heel, full heel. He came, it was huge, big deal. Obviously, massive mm -hmm. ordeal. There was a couple others, but they currently have us battling to get to be the finalists for the WWE Moment of the Year finalists for the SB. So right now, I'm in a play-in tournament to become an SB uh, award finalist, I think, right mm -hmm. now. The WWE sorts it out, then they put it together, then it happens. Don't know how this came to be, by the way. Wait, how are you? What are you? Are you separate from Roman? Yeah, I'm also in the category. And What's your moment? What, what moment? When I kicked the fucking asshole right in the face and his soul left mm -hmm. his body. Yeah. Obviously, the guy that you're friends with. Yeah. That, oh, uh, your, we, NXT, your NXT stuff when you actually wrestled. Bingo. Yes, exactly. Okay. So that was... Uh, I it, thought it was as a broadcaster you were up for an SB. No, nah, next year. Next year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of got caught in the award cycle. You know what I mean? Yeah. That whole thing. You got to get in there when I started in that whole thing. But uh, they got us going against Bad Bunny right now. And it's, oh. they set us up for complete failure because he's up for one as well. He had a massive, incredible match at WrestleMania. Then he sold out, I think, like 65 straight stadiums the next day or something like yeah. that. Uh, he, it's me versus Bad Bunny and Sam Benito, I believe. Believe is going to wipe the floor with us, and uh, that's a shame. We're close to an SB, though. Hey, almost. Not, not, not it's dead not yet. Over, yeah. If you we, did win, like, we are dead. Like you should. Bad Bunny is a bad He's bunny. A titan. That is, he is a monster. And by the way, great, great wrestler. Mm -hmm. Great match as well. True. What's going on, Dick? If you did win like you should, uh, they weren't there that night, I don't think, but they were part of the run. Would, would AJ, Darius, and Nick come up on the SB stage with you to accept the award? Yeah, because that moment, by the way. It isn't just that moment. You know, the thing about, thing about sports entertainment as a whole is it's the story. Ah, you know, man. it's the story. It's the entire everything about it. You know, that's why I believe it's going to be tough. Okay, there has been Bad Bunny, Miz. That whole thing was incredible. That was amazing. I, I, nothing but love for that. But me and Cole, the buildup, which was, uh, you know, for years before it even happened on the internet, it was just, I enjoyed it so much. So I believe everybody goes on stage. That was, Ty ah, got pushed. Of course. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So Ty's a part of that. Everybody that watched the blow up by him acting yeah. like a child, I think you guys come on the stage as well. Yeah. I think it's everybody included, which also means, I guess, those stooges that you call friends, the Undisputed Era has to be oh, there as well, which shit. might become, you know, a little bit of a thing. Well, here's the thing. So the ESPYs are normally the day after the All-Star game because it's the only day of the year, I think, where no sports are being played. So it would go, you'd go from the home run derby to L.A. for the ESPYs, and then you go to Houston. Then to Houston and yeah. to Fort Worth. What? Yeah. They usually uh, record uh, it. It's not, they usually record the ESPYs, don't they? Oh, we don't know. Why don't you tell us? Whoa. Yeah, because you know all the... You know, huh? You well, I, just, I was saying, like, I don't know. I assume Russell Wilson is hosting again. I'm hoping he'll be in too. person and won't be virtual this year. I agree. I, and, you know, if we do any more virtual award shows, I think we've all learned, like, if we come to a time, we need Steve Harvey mm -hmm. and we need Ricky Gervais. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and then let's just move along. Every, every single show, let them do it. They'll bury whoever, and they'll just keep it moving. We'll all laugh. We'll chuckle. It'll be fun. We'll all share the moment together at home. Um, but the the days of the Zoom award shows are over, my friend. That's yeah. right. Hey, we beat COVID, pal. Yeah. You hear? Yeah. Hey, Russell Wilson. Maybe, hopefully, he is the host. But I think he's going to be on the stage if he's hosting. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think. I think we did it, AJ. I think we're on the other side. I think award shows are going back to normal. Woo! That's what everybody wants. Yeah. I want to see him in. I want to see him in the theater. I want to see him in the ballroom. I want to see him clapping. I want to see him overdressed. I want to see him uncomfortable. I want to see him congratulating each other. I want to see them thanking themselves. Mm -hmm.
I want to see them telling me how to, you know, what every decision I should make right yeah. before they win, like the best graphic designer. You know what I mean? Like that's, everyone. It's about, we beat COVID. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's awesome. Yeah. Just watch out for that variant, right? Well, well we, we, we want the variant that Diggs got Delta. and John Rom got. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was the Delta. I think it was the Alpha they got. Well, yeah, it's not something you can get. You're born with it. You have but. to check the emails. It's the gene. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, listen, whoa, I, I, whoa, I, man, listen hey, Gump, I I'm going to let you know, Gump, I'm already with this one. Yeah. <laughs> this one here, you know, he tries every single day. Look, he's so intrigued. Yeah, he Look knows. at that. He's like, he's like, excuse me. I don't me. know what you're, I'm trying to figure it out what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, I'll yeah, send it to you right now. I can't have this. You know the hey. email. Who emailed? Like, whoa, oh, Diggs. Whoa. I need you Tony. to remain spineless over there. <laughs> okay, I need you. I mean, I guess the denominator did come up in your conversation as well, but uh, Gumpy, Gumpy came in all... Oh, enlightened one particular day. Yeah. I get, Gumpy found something, and uh, I haven't watched it because it's not in my world, but it does appear to have made its way around said office here. Uh -huh. And uh, I assume you watched the same thing Gumpy did. He probably sent it to you as well. Uh, yeah. Why don't you explain to us what happened, AJ? I, I honestly don't know. What emails, what, what emails, or what video? Well, okay. how, how, well, first off, how long is the video? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Oh, no chance. No chance. You got to do it. AJ. That's what happened with it's me, by the way. Watch. AJ, I saw the time. I said, "There's no way." I think everybody knew there was no way I was going to do it. But I've been getting. Hey, yeah. I've been getting a lot of. Send it to me then. I'll send. Oh, you it already there. did. You already seen it. All right. Let's Dead just... serious. Dead serious. I have not seen whatever you're talking about. Let's move along. It's wild. Gumpy read the files. Yeah, it's absurd. He's Tom Pelissero. Yeah, Gumpy's Tom Pelissero, but instead of just an NFL memo. It's like a few thousand emails. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, Drew in Indiana. What's going on, Drew? We'd like to make everybody know, Gumpy did not make video we were talking about. No. Uh, he has studied it, though, for... Uh, yeah, diligently. He, he can there. recite it like it's the Pledge of Allegiance to Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you have, Drew? Fellas, we beat COVID. You guys taking a shit. We did. Hell yeah, Drew. <laughs> the echo. Thank you, Drew. What do you want to talk about, Drew? Well, first of all, I'm really surprised that um, yeah. you just got called a bitch by Jeff Passan. That was that was really crazy. Thank you. It was. Right um, passage. <laughs> it kind of was, yeah. It's a um, passing passage. AJ, you've got to tell Aaron to come back. He's got to come okay. back. Tell him, AJ. Four more years. Four more, more years. years. Four, Four more years. years. Four more years. Buy the shirt. Buy the, buy the shirt. Buy the shirt. By the way, no refund available if he does leave. Yeah. <laughs> I, I bought the I bought the shirt one day before the news about Aaron came out. We'll have a big sale on those shirts if something does come out. Yeah, no worries. Oh, not half price. Not gonna slash it more half price. Switch the shirt. Listen, we will. We'll make no money off of it. More years. More years. Yeah. Take the four off there. Yeah. No more. Yeah, but we will not lose money off of him leaving. We're not going to just go into the red on this particular thing because that. But we will make zero dollars off of it at, from this point going forward. What are you going to do? That shirt is a zero profit shirt until <laughs> yeah. until further notice. Mm -hmm. We will not profit off of that four more years. But the thing about it is our uh, our store is so hard to get through. <laughs> to find that four more year shirt, you would have to be digging a yeah. long, long You'll time. You'll give up before you even. You yeah, know. and if you get there, I, I guess I you deserve it. I yeah. out of my work day to find it. Yeah, that's it. it's there not easy go. to navigate that thing, but I want to let you know, congrats on finding it. Yeah, well done. And we'll, we'll pull it. We'll pull it when this whole thing ends. So you might've got one of the last ones, dude. Good for you. Thank you, thank you. Pat, I got one more question for you, pal. Yeah, go ahead, bub. I love the clip that you guys play between, like, um, you know, each hour. And the, the last one that you guys play, when you, you know, kind of showing your whole story and, like, how you kind of left football um, a, a little early, some would say, you know. Oh, the bag. Um, Fandor. Mm, thank you. What? Yeah, yeah, thank totally. Um, <laughs> what, what inspired you to go off the um, – you know, the beaten football path per se and, you know, double down on yourself, bet on yourself and do your own thing. Because I got to tell you, I did the same thing this Drew. past year go, and I, I have more self value than I've had in so long. Let's go, I Drew. You, man, you inspired me to do that, buddy. So I, I want to hear what, what made you 
How's it work out financially for you? Uh, well, well, AJ, slow down. I'm just wondering because self-worth? it's worked out for you on all on all fronts, Pat. So I, I hope this guy is inspired by you and it's working out for him. Uh, Don't worry about that, Drew. We appreciate you, Drew. It's Thank you, Drew. Drew. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Drew. 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 Why would you hang up on him? Show me your W two. Why did you want to take <laughs> money, yeah. Drew? I don't know what taxes you pay. Are you yeah. renting or leasing or buying or what are you doing? Jeez. I'm pretty sure Drew gets like said something to me on Twitter. I think he went from making like 85k a year to over a mil with this new job that he took. Drew, let's go, yeah. Drew. Wow. Let's go, Drew. Drew, Drew, you I didn't know. I'm so sorry. I just assumed you were going to try yeah. to take that to a terrible place. That, that is, I mean, maybe no, you for setting the culture. I made that up. To... I have no idea what he made. <laughs> oh, <laughs> say that. Come on, that's, dude. That's, that's, he that's makes the problem. That's the problem. Anyways, <laughs> Drew, thing. it's not about financially what happens drew it's about everything else in this world uh but the finances have to matter because if without it everything else goes for me i've talked about it at length man i just i was ready on like six different reasons and that whole thing i'm very thankful for the boys here barstool giving me an opportunity whenever i went to retire nobody else really did it but i was enjoying what i was doing off the field a lot while i was playing still I was doing stand-up. I got a chance to witness that. I was doing radio. I had uh, doing a lot of charity with my foundation. And I was having real fulfillment off the field as opposed to whenever I'd go on and the offense would fail or whatever. So I just got to the point where I found out I could potentially make some money off the field when I did stand-up, rented the theater, sold the tickets myself, had a merch company, had my own podcast company. While I was playing, I saw that there was money to be made uh, and just kind of did my own thing. Surgeries indifference of opinion on how I'm sh- I should act as a punter in the NFL via me and some people maybe in the front office. It was just the whole universe was telling me to move along. And I, you know, I'm the type of guy, I think everybody has learned that if the universe is telling me something, I will run with it. Uh, and I haven't had a regret ever since. My parents were very confused. My friends, a lot of them very confused. Uh, but obviously, a couple of the guys, few of the guys, a lot of my friends were like, let's do this thing and let's enjoy it. But it could have all failed mightily, Drew. It could have. And there was a couple of times I thought maybe it was going to. I'm like, I don't want to do this much work for the rest of my life. I can just go back and punch some balls. But then if I do that, I look like an idiot who wasn't able to make it off the field. And I, uh, you know, I'm a little bit of a uh, stubborn asshole when it comes to that type of stuff. So I don't know, Drew. I hope you have immense success betting on yourself because sometimes you can hit for big and we got very lucky and i can't i couldn't have done it without all the incredible humans around me on a daily basis so i hope your team is great drew uh aj you got about 20 seconds here before chris mad dog Russo with mad dog unleashed is on you got anything to say to the serious listeners i'm just curious why jet keeps coming at gum why is this happening and me though they called me a bitch so he's He's coming after me next that's good i need that Say so you need to be humbled a little bit. You're just getting uh, celebrated at I that want, cult meeting like a, for so long. It's a compliment. It's like when George Carlin or they, they kill you. You're like, oh, okay, I'm one of the guys. Oh, when a pass and passage happens. That's what you said earlier. Chris Mad Dog Russo with a much better show than ours will be on the other side of this six minute break. We're back, Mignana, with another massive giveaway. Cheers. That's really. What was the answer? What was the answer from yesterday? Uh, the answer from yesterday was driving driving was what we were and we had two winners obviously a lot of people answered driving it was actually the third overall answer uh which was uh pretty impressive it was what we were thinking because every time you talk about driving i feel like i learn more about us as humans yeah Yeah. you know i I just feel like it's one of my favorite things it's a topic that was kind of hot for us for a bit we've kind of backed off of you're trying to think of things that could get answers but also in a genre where there's a lot of answers driving was our favorite at the time when we decided to win her, but there was a lot of good ones. Big congrats to Chris here, I think. And uh, Don Tan here. Um, Jack Rabbit fan. Okay, go big, go blue, go Jacks. I assume that's a South Dakota State person. That golf cart, put some wheels on that thing, go ride that thing around South Dakota. Uh, Congrats. And today, uh, do we have today's already? No, we'll announce that tomorrow. We'll announce that tomorrow. I don't know if there's a winner. I have not searched, by the way. For $25,000 to the first person that gets the right answer, and then two 70-inch TVs, how many curls did I do before that picture was taken earlier today? Alternating count, one, two, three, four. What's the number? Must use hashtag PMS 100K giveaway weekday 
two um, to officially enter. We're trending. We can't thank you enough. You're the fucking best. Yeah. That's why we're giving away everything, and we will always continue to do so because just like I said to Drew, like without everybody here, I'd never make it. Well, obviously, without the people that watch and listen, we would never, ever make it. So thank you so much. You guys will always thank you. get shit from me, pal. I'll tell you that. You know, Oprah gave away everything. Mm -hmm. Ellen gave away a bunch. It's one of those things where I feel what like... Ha what happened to Ellen? She retired, dude. Is she, she off the air? Yeah, she's a bad mm -hmm. person. Well, there were some stories that came out. I don't mean to cut you off, but did she get bumped out? Did she retire? How did it work? I don't know. I, I think I saw her do a stand-up or an interview a couple years ago because, you know, she's the up... Like, I'm, I'm nothing like Ellen DeGeneres. I'm nowhere near as good of a talk show host as Ellen or whatever, but kind of similar, like pretty upbeat, like, hey, here we go. Like, and when I'm around people, I think everybody's expecting that. Which you guys is, both dance usually on your shows? Bingo. But also, like she wow. said, when you're the always happy person, when you're portrayed as the always happy person, when you're not, it's like a massive ordeal. And she said that she was, I forget how the interview went, but she basically said, she, she didn't enjoy or didn't like being known as the person that was always happy. So I feel like everywhere she went, it was always like, I don't know, I, whatever the case. She got sick of it and she like, she was trying to do, I don't know, she was gonna start doing more stand up so that she could be like, a little, whatever the case was. I heard that a couple years ago. Then the story obviously came out about the behind the scenes. And yeah. I think she was potentially over it. I think. Her Plus yeah. the ratings going oh, down, no, the stories no, coming no. out. I mean, I think it oh, was yeah. just like a universe was telling her, like, okay, I'm gonna move on. Not 100% sure. Don't know what's all true and what's not true, but I think that was, I think it was a accumulation of things that happened with Ellen DeGeneres. It would be tough walking around and people, wait, why aren't you smiling, Ellen? Why aren't you happy? What the hell's going on? Come on, I think we're dancing. Laugh, Ellen, come, come on. on. You think they constantly ask her what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's wrong? Are you Are you okay? What's wrong? Stop are you okay? Like that would be like, yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Okay, sometimes I'm in a bad mood. Fuck you. Is that true? That, is that a story out there? I don't know. Oh, Dick yeah. just said it, so we don't know if it's true or not. I mean, we can't. Believe. I heard it somewhere. Oh, there, okay. there See, are. That's what's wrong with this show. That's why we can't thank you enough for watching this show. I just Googled it, did not, nothing popped okay, up. Okay, no just situations coffee. like that happen. Jeez. By the way, Diggs, when you say that, that was the the vein of things that yeah. were coming out. I don't know about hot coffee. <laughs> Attempting burning somebody. No, it was I like would. verbal, verbal stuff. It was not. Yes, I didn't hear any like. Hot, I mean, that's like an like attack. Verbally. If it's very hot. Now listen, a lot of people turned on Ellen when they heard that she was, you know, hard on her staff or whatever. After 20 years behind the scenes, I mean, if everything a coach said to some players in the NFL came out, I, I think there would be much different opinions on a lot of, <laughs> you know. But it's a whole different world. It, you you yeah. got to be able to read the room. You know, it's a much different atmosphere. I think when you're dealing with creative people as opposed to you know, football dumbasses, but I'm just saying. Steve Harvey had a little bit of a run there where people were saying that he, behind the scenes, they were, do not walk up to Steve and talk to him without a scheduled appointment, because I assume with everything he had going on, he was hosting Family Feud here in America, Family Feud in Africa somewhere, his morning show, an afternoon talk show, uh, Miss Universe, and everything else, Celebrity Family Feud, which is an entire other thing. Little Big Shots for a while, Little prime big, time. New Year's Eve show. He was hosting everything. And I assume whenever you're moving through all those sets, there's a lot of people that you're working alongside where people, oh, I got an idea for a show. Can you invest? Can you love it? Mm -hmm. And then, But that, you know, that probably led to Steve telling somebody, hey, and then that led to a fool. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, some people have bad days, you know. Yeah. Tom Griswold told me that from the Bob and Tom show. Somebody had a terrible interview one day when I was on there. And I was like, wow, that's, that guy fucking stinks, huh? And he was like, sometimes people have bad days. Got to remember that. Can't cancel them just yet. Maybe next time. But some people just wake up and have a bad day or whatever, you know? Just So that was something I always, like, tried to keep in mind. But if they show that they're, you know, an asshole on a regular basis, probably. Yeah. I was going to say, I think Ellen was dishing out quite a few of those bad days herself. That's what I mean. You know? I, I think there was, I think that, that was alleged, you know, but... <laughs> Who knows? She's gone. She gave away a bunch of shit, though. Yeah. Kelly Corkson, didn't she take her gig? Uh, she took uh, that guy who was in that uh, rom-com, Harry. James Corden? Oh, uh, uh, Hugh Grant? Grant? Harry Connick Jr. Yeah. Harry. Harry Connick <laughs> oh, Jr. Okay. Oh. Not James Corden. Is he in a rom-com? James Corden? He, he's an Cats. actor. He's, in, he's on Broadway. He's everywhere. Yeah, I know. I see he's very talented on Broadway. He has, you know, hey, 
Carpool karaoke is unbelievable. The show's still on. Is this late night show still on right now? Yeah, I think it does big, big numbers on the internet, which is all any of those shows are built for anyways. Every All those late night shows now have just become clippable segments, mm -hmm. just hoping to hit on the internet, where back in the day it used to be like an entire night experience, wind down, wrap up. It's a much different world now. And he's created like, what, four shows? The Battle Rap Show, yeah. yep. Carpool Karaoke, some other stuff out of segments that he's done. Yeah, I think he's crushed. But that Sidewalk uh, Broadway, or whatever the hell they do. You ever what? see that? Mm, no. no. Jaywalk something? No. I forgot. Jay, Jay Leno had jaywalking. Okay, so it's not that. They do a full fucking like him and the Lion King uh, Broadway cast oh. at like a red light go out oh. and just do an entire scene. Basically. Oh, yeah, I have seen one of those before. Yeah, 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 yeah. obviously rigged. It's in the middle of nowhere. There's mm -hmm. actually no traffic except for a couple cars, but it's like, oh, that's a really good concept. But I can see how you guys have to do it at this place because. You know, yeah, New York. Get the fuck out of the yeah, way! Are you kidding me? It's actually LA, so you got. Oh, people, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you on. got people probably like, all right, baby, Simba, yeah. get the fuck. Yeah. You know that whole thing, but yeah, James, big brain, not him. Harry though had a show. He came out and just sang every yeah. morning. And Kelly, I think, is doing the same thing. I'm not 100 sure. People love Harry Connick Jr. I'll tell you what, his show stunk. He uh, he was Seems bad. like it. It was bad, bad show, and I feel like I give because I enjoy like talk shows. I love them. I actually enjoy them. There's a clip for me in college where it's like, I want to do a talk show. Like, I want to have, I enjoy conversation. I enjoy. Still, though, you think talk shows are still you, still that way? Like, if you had a primetime talk show on a big network, you would still be able to make it good? Harry was at like 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. or whatever. I think he was after. Um, Steve Wilkos. No, what do you do? Have like no, cooking segments he's and before stuff? Steve. What, what was it? No, he just, it was like a talk show, but it was in the morning. It was after the what? The mo Good Morning America. What's the NBC one? The Today, Today show? show? Today Show, yeah. yeah. It was like after the Today Show, and then there's something, and then there's Dr. Phil, then there's Ellen. There's a whole lineup, you know? The daytime talk show. Steve Harvey's on another channel. There's the daytime talk show thing. Like, that's where they, I think they kind of like, uh, like test people out to go do other stuff. So I enjoy watching it. I like seeing how people conduct conversations and stuff. Harry was not good at it. He was incredible at singing, but the show stunk. I mean, it was a bad show. <laughs> Kelly is actually pretty entertaining. She can sing the shit out of basically everything. Ah. So that's like unbelievable. And the conversation she has seemed to be cool. But that's not an easy job. Those fucking mainstream corpo network shows are not easy at all, especially with the bullshit that you have to sell to. Oh, yeah. Like that, four minute interviews and you uh, got to make and you have pre interviews. So you have to set up the person to try to make them look good and pub their movie or whatever they're promoting. Like it is a very difficult job. Well, and you got to pump out a show every day. It's not like you're recording. Yeah. The season. You have a lot of a lot of good fake energy is what you have to have too. Yeah, and I think a lot of people do ha uh, potentially utilize things that provide energy as mm -hmm. well. And I'm not oh, talking about oh. Celsius heat. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't know that. I didn't think that was rampant in that world. I, I think in most worlds, whether from what I'm learning, I think probably a lot of worlds. Oh, yeah. Potentially still, I didn't know that. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Come across it. really. Oh yeah. That's I'm going the other. I'm I'm going. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna slow it down a little bit yeah. actually but i'll meet you at the end i'll see you at the end. <laughs> we're gonna get there differently but i'll see you there what's up dicks uh james corden's uh segment or whatever it's called crosswalk the musical there it is i it's, watched a little piece of where will smith does aladdin in a crosswalk it's really good unbelievable i think that was where i was introduced as well was will smith yeah. came out and just crushed Obviously. it and I was like, boom, all right, this is a good series. I'm going to watch all these. He's a four-hour variety show coming out on Netflix. Who? Will Smith. See, I wanted to host a variety show. Dean Martin used to have a variety show. Four was... hours, Pat. What, just one night? Four hours. Just one night? Who cares? All right. It better be one I don't know. It's great, night. though, because it's... it's great. If it's good, then you'll watch all of it. If yeah, it's, it's fucking awesome. Off. You'll watch all of it, AJ. No, listen, have, oh, you, yeah, you, have sure. you ever seen Dean Martin's variety? Very inspiring. Guy. Have you ever seen Dean Martin's <laughs> show? I've never watched the full ones. Okay, so I like actually one. I bought the, yeah. the DVD collection of it's these things. It's a different things. time now, though. Yeah, very different time. Don Rickles and all those guys. Like, it's a different world now. No, it wasn't just hey, roast. Dino. Dude. Hey, listen, that, that's what we're saying. You didn't watch the episode. So, like, I watched the thing. It was him. Like, it, he would come out. He would set the stage, you know. And then he would just roll through different acts, whether it was a magician, a musician, an interview, a, a, a death defying. It was just, like, it was a great watch, actually. And it was, like, one of the things that... I hope to run someday. I like that variety shows mm -hmm. are potentially coming back. And of course, Will Smith is the guy fucking leading the charge because the Fresh Prince of Bel Air don't miss, pal. Uh -huh. Four hours of Will, give me 20 hours of Will. Yeah.
Don't miss. Yeah. I could be. So when we stuff that I see, we <laughs> talked about this before, and I swear the tweet said four hours, but now I'm seeing an hour, one hour. See, that's, that's much better decision. See, four now, episodes. Is it four episodes? Oh. I don't think that's a good decision either. Hmm. Like, I don't think the variety show should have a limit on how long it is. And I think if it was stacked with like X, it wouldn't just be an hour. So like Dean's was, I think it was a weekend, might've been two hours to an hour. I don't know what it was, but that's back whenever there was what, four channels, two channels. Mm -hmm. So you were kind of forced to watch it. So maybe it was a little bit longer, but those styles of show need to make their way back. And the internet's the only place that you could do it. Cause it's like people casually drinking yeah. show, you know. Mm -hmm. like, well, they used to like actually have conversations back then, and they would it, it wasn't all perfect. Like if they were interviewing somebody, it could go on a little bit. It wasn't all set up, and so t didn't have to be so tight. It was it felt more authentic. They were. We've done a couple shows that are like variety shows for celebrations, for things like New Year's Eve and other stuff. It's fucking awesome, dude. We uh, the last one, we had a magician, Carl Magic, a musician. Didn't it big trick energy? Yeah, who's the? Uh, oh yeah, the guitar the guy. Guitar player, guy who just absolutely uh, said we had uh, Joey Jaws. Yep. Joey Jaws uh, drank thirteen beers in seventy-two seconds. Ugh. Something did like he, that. Did he bong him or what? No, he just no, put him. He had him in a pint glass right next to each other, and he just whoop 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 thirteen of them. It was unbelievable. <laughs> New Year's Eve, we did an entire night like that. I love like it yeah, that is was awesome. It is entertaining yeah. as hell. You know what I mean? it is. The surprise aspect of it all. Well, is and awesome. there's. There's a billion very talented people out there that do cool things that people would like to see, too. Just out of nowhere. I did one. Um, there was a tornado in Indiana, and I did, like, a tornado relief show or whatever. I forget. It might have been New Year's. I don't, I don't recall. Chuck Pagano came out of nowhere. Chuck Pagano was in the back, and uh, I go, joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, a man who, uh, and at that time, it was, who are they going to keep? Are they going to keep the GM or the coach? So it was, like, going into that whole era that time the season was ending going into an off season where everybody thought there was going to be a decision made and uh chuck comes out he's got fair gamos on Ooh. you know he was sitting side stage with his wife having a couple of drinks enjoying the show and every time an act would go i'd be out there just hanging with him or whatever he comes out that place made it very obvious whose side they were on yeah. in that entire thing chuck came out he did some dancing you know oh. hey how's it going shake hand wave thanks to everybody said hello walked off like those moments you can't really you can't, you know, those, those are moments that I think in the world where everybody knows everything at all times, that genuine surprise when somebody just pops like, holy fuck, I did not expect. The Shazier, we talked about it a lot. Yeah. Shazier walking up onto a stage in Pittsburgh and nobody having a clue he was there, it was fucking, yeah, those are cool. I hope, if hey. Will Smith's bringing that back, let's go. Pac-Man um, too in Cincinnati. Oh, yes, well, that, was, that was two years ago today, actually. Pac-Man coming up from the back of the stage. This place had, the stairs were in the back of the stage because it was a rock hall, <laughs> basically, that we were in. Cool place. And he came, we smelled him, smelled him. He, uh, he was potentially medicating, which mm -hmm. he owns a company now. And then, because we were wondering if he, what time he was going to come because the show had to change. Uh, because it wasn't a stand-up setup. This was very much a, this is a music venue. Yeah. So the show had to change pretty quickly. We had to figure it out what time is Pat getting here. And literally on stage, I could I could smell him. All right, I think, hey, that's, and I actually ran a question down. Hey, Adam's, uh, Pat's here? They're like, yeah, he's downstairs. Like, perfect, here we go. We were going to bring on Chris Collinsworth. Boo! Oh, yeah. But instead, we got... Pac Man Jones. He walked out. That place went fucking. Yeah, the room ape damn near shit. came off. Chris Collinsworth did not deserve that, by the way. No, he. I mean, he lives in Cincinnati too. Wait, so he? you you said that knowing that it would get a boo for Collinsworth and no. Pac would cheer? No, what I thought was going to. This is. I can normally read the room pretty good. I thought because Chris Collinsworth started Pro Football Focus in Cincinnati, he lived in Cincinnati. He played, he played for the Bengals. Played for the Bengals. Yeah. You know, he's on Sunday Night Football. I guess people don't like him. They cannot like him, but he's a commentator. Like, I didn't know it was like that. So I was actually telling him, like, hey, this is, I tried. Like, I tried my best, you yeah. know. And instead, it was just like, I did not expect that. I, a lot of people were drunk. A lot of people were drunk. But when Pac-Man came out, it was crazy. Uh, today's show is presented by Traeger Grills, the wood pellet grill you absolutely need for this summer. We had a lot of fun grilling a steak and giving one away last week. Remember that? Oh, yeah. And now it's time for you to get yours. The Traeger Grill is the easiest way to enjoy wood-fired flavor. Wood-fired flavor. Woo! Nothing better. When I'm saying fire, you know what I'm talking about. Have you about. ever used uh -huh. a grill? Huh? Have you ever used a grill? Yeah, I had a... Uh, 
I had a big green egg. Before that, I had one of them little, you know, slot dick operations <laughs> where you got to do the whole thing to the thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've done it. Not often. I'm not like a grill master, but I could turn, I can spark the thing if I have to and mm -hmm. start it and, you know, get you clean the thing I, if I have to. Not, <laughs> not signing up for it. Not like, hey, I should be doing this. I'm not taking that responsibility. But if it has to happen, if my wife, who is an incredible cook, doesn't, is what, somewhere out of town or something like that, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know what? Instead of ordering DoorDash, I'm gonna grill out and I'm gonna use my Traeger. Well, you just learned how to use DoorDash. Okay, and it's very convenient. I see why, <laughs> yeah. I see why a lot of people use Makes it. Sense. But with the Traeger, it's very convenient as well because I can run this thing from my, my phone. So Ooh. they actually take all the stoogeness out of it from me. So it doesn't matter that I was an accomplished griller in the past, okay, which I think was called into question. If you're not, Traeger wanted to make it easier for you to be a great griller, smoker, what? baker, what? roaster, what? brazer, what? barbecuer, what? whatever the case, Traeger is in your life to make it better. In the uh, wood pellets. Oh, yeah. Ooh, oh, man. that wood fire grill taste. Oh, Nothing man. Nothing better. Go to TraegerGrills.com forward slash Pat and enter code Pat at checkout, and you'll get free shipping. Go to need it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sons of bitches are huge. It's a lot. Well, there's, there's different sizes for sure, mm -hmm. but a grill being shipped is going to be heavy, yeah. uh, especially when it's good. So go to T-R-A-E-G-E-R-G-R-I-L-L-S.com forward slash Pat and enter code Pat at checkout to score free shipping. I got to go record something with Sirius here in like 16 minutes. Congrats. I don't know if this is a congrats thing. Like, I, <laughs> It is cool that I was asked to do it. What are you doing? Uh, I'm hosting a town hall with Elio Castroneves, who just won uh, the Indy 500 for his fourth time, which is a record. Wow. 15-minute uh, conversation up. about it. Congrats, Elio. 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 So I'm not a big fan of the way IndyCar runs their business. Okay? I don't like... My interactions with them have not been fantastic, okay? I, I will say, and that's very different than everybody else's interactions, though, with the IMS. It's a beautiful place. It is a hell of a race. It's an unbelievable thing. Me, personally, though, it's a, nothing against the drivers. A lot of friends are drivers. Graham Rahal actually did my, my car. I talked to him. Uh, nothing against the, just, you know, some people in the whole thing. I'm honored to be talking to Elio, who was driving a Meyer Shank car. Meyer used to be the president of Sirius, so he was the reason he's from Indiana. He's the reason Sirius got into sponsoring it. So this is an incredible honor. All right? This is a big deal for me to be having these conversations, but I did not do enough research for this thing to be started <laughs> in 15 minutes from now, is what I'm saying. Probably going to have to get out of here, is what, I, AJ, that's what I'm trying to hey, I think to. I'm glad you said yes, you agreed to do it. I think those thing, things like that, that most people that aren't, diehard indie fans wouldn't listen to with you hosting i think you would bring a lot more people there i don't think so they've done a poor yeah. job marketing um <laughs> but i'm just saying with your weird your, your questions and how you handle it will be much better than if some buttoned up professional corpo did it yeah i think so i hope so i hope i can make it good i, I have actual questions and i know enough you know i know enough because i've been around here well or do you just you you're smart you'll act like you know enough no i actually that's the thing i do that been since like fifth grade, sixth or fourth grade. I've been doing that for a long, long time, you know, just kind of like act as if here. But in this particular case, I mean, I had a car running in the hundredth running of the Indy 500. You know, I've been in the, I've actually been in like the pit area while a car, I, you know what I mean? I've been there. Done, so I actually know the biz a little bit when a lot of people in America don't have a clue that IndyCar exists. F1, I think, is getting a bigger push than IndyCar. I know a lot about it because the Super Bowl and 300,000 people come here every single year, basically. It's awesome. It's a cool thing. Yeah, it's great. I, I, I'm somewhat named after A.J. Foyt, the great IndyCar driver. Hey, you know, A.J. Foyt's son is potential heir to Colt uh, since marrying of Jim Irsay's daughter, uh, middle nice. daughter. Yeah, so. two two powerful indie people getting together. Huh? I would say so. Yeah. I would say so. That is a power couple in Indianapolis. Yeah. And when it happened, by the way, there was like, oh god, damn. okay, wow. Wow. we got like the Royals going on. Yeah. This is awesome. Uh, we're gonna get out of here. See everybody tomorrow. Win twenty five thousand dollars or one of the two seventy inch TVs we're giving away. Hammer down will begin at what time? Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You mean oh. because you have to record in the same area they're doing Maybe. I, I mean, I could do it on my phone out there. Nah, do it. Make it good. 
4.30, right? But, I mean, Hammer Don's in a rhythm here. I, there's no reason for uh, that to there's, affect... There's no ball games till 7. We're good. Yeah, we're fine. Okay, so you guys will start 4.15, 4.30. It's 15 minutes. Couldn't you do it from 3.30 to, and end by 3.50? Oh, no, no, no. This isn't 50. This isn't 20 minutes, uh -oh. No, no. Th that's what I'm talking about. Like, every minute that passes here, uh, this is supposed to be an hour long. <laughs> Just follow. Just keep asking follow-ups. That's all you got to do. Well, then I got to go to Jack in Cincinnati, who has yeah. a question in the town hall that we're in. You know what I mean? So I'm. Uh, oh, that's yeah. You'll we'll call you'll it four thirty. Four thirty. Hammer Don live at youtube.com forward slash hammer Don. The boys are hot. Can't wait to watch that. I got to go try to learn some stuff quickly, and then I get an incredible opportunity to talk to Elio Castro Neves, uh, and then we'll watch the Hammer Down boys make us all some money. AJ, we'll see you manana, pal. All right, I think he was on Dancing with the Stars. You could jam that in there, too. Okay, see, I did not know that. That is, nice. uh, that is yeah. very, very nice of you. I appreciate you doing that. Are you I'm sure? I'm pretty sure. I'm 70%. Okay, cool. He seems to be a very fascinating guy. I've, I've heard his name, obviously, a lot around here. He's won four times. He's right. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I assume he's a great dancer. All right, we'll talk to him. He's Let's from... Uh, he's from... Spain? Missouri. Not there. We'll look it up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Pat Maggie Show, Tuesday, June 22nd. Have a good one. Yeah.